Awaken. Awaken. Find what you're looking for amongst the dead, close to death. Yes, closer than I'd like. You have the smell of the Colto tank about you. How do you feel? Yes, I had hoped as much. I slept here too long and could not awaken. It may be I reached out unconsciously, and your mind must have been a willing one. Or perhaps you have been trained for such things. I am Kreia, and I am your rescuer, as you are mine. Tell me, do you recall what happened? Your ship was attacked, and it is no more. You were the only survivor, a result of your Jedi training, no doubt. Your stance, your walk, tells me you are a Jedi. Your walk is heavy. You carry something that weighs you down. So it would seem. Keep your past and let us focus on the now. I do not know. I was removed from the events of the world as I slept. A survey of the surroundings may provide the answers we seek. I am not offering to help you. I am not so young as to leap from death's door as quickly as you. I leave you to the explorations of this place. Here I will remain and attempt to center myself. A last word of caution. I would find out as much as you can about this place quickly. I fear we will need to depart as suddenly as we arrived. Even as I slept, I felt much unrest here. I saw strange visions, minds colored with fear. Now, everything here feels terribly silent. The ship we arrived in must still be in this place. We should recover it and leave. We were attacked once, and I fear our attackers will not give up the hunt so easily. Without transport, weapons, and information, they will find us easy prey indeed. You may wish to extend your search to some clothes, if only for proper first impressions. I do not know. Why did they spare you? Indeed, a Jedi trance could protect one from such poisons. In fact, the sedatives may have been intended to keep you unconscious for some time. It would prove lethal to those untrained in such techniques, however. Most curious. And so do you. Perhaps we could discuss it at length later on. Now we have other concerns, among them finding our new enemy. Ah, yes, that did not escape me as well. It may be that our proximity during our long slumber may have had unforeseen consequences. We may be able to speak without speaking. It may be that it will pass with time. Then hope that we have little to say to each other, lest it prove distracting. Curious. Why were you spared? I have little choice, and neither do you. It is an advantage to us both, and I suggest we make use of it. Probably not, but perhaps. In time, I have found that answers come in their own time, not ours. Turn your energy to the matter at hand. If we cannot find a way out of here, the answers will prove useless anyway. Very well. If they do not find us first, be watchful. I confess I know little more than you do. I do not know where here is. I do recall rescuing you. The Republic ship you were on was attacked, and you were the only survivor— a result of your Jedi training, no doubt. I would find out as much as you can about this place quickly. I fear we will need to depart as suddenly as we arrived. I have felt a disturbance. Our enemy is here. We must leave at once. The one that fired upon the Ebon Hawk as we attempted to rescue you. And he will not let us go without blood being shed. You know much of battle. Enough to know that this is a battle you cannot win. The story is a long one, and time is short. Come, we must go, and quickly. We need to make our way to the docking area on this level. I fear the airlock has already opened, and if so, we must be on our guard. If we cannot reach the Ebon Hawk, then we must find a way to escape on the ship that has docked here. We are together in this matter, you and I. What affects you affects me. There can be no division in our actions, or everything is lost. I realize that you have traveled alone ever since the Mandalorian Wars, but that time of self-reflection is over. And if you cannot see beyond yourself and your own needs, then you should know that I have the only means of accessing the Ebon Hawk's Navi computer. Without it, we both are trapped here. Very well. If they do not find us first, be watchful. I am recovering. Your concern is noted, but not necessary. Keep your mind on the present. I sense trouble here. When I have recovered, I will do what I can to help you. You needed rescuing once, and I am prepared to rescue you again if the need arises. Be careful. There is much energy in the room beyond, yet it stems from nothing that lives. Can you not sense them? Reach out. Cast aside your sight. Cast aside what you see, and instead reach out with your perception. Ah, you can feel them. The droids you cannot perceive, but the small oscillations of energy, that you can feel, echoing outwards.
Ah, you hear it. It is fate, but it is there. It is the force you feel. It has not been so long as for you to forget. Do not turn away from it. Listen. Feel it echoing within you. Come. I shall guide you down the familiar paths. You will need it if we are to survive and escape this place. What in space is going on? Who's this? Another Jedi? What, did you guys suddenly start breeding when I wasn't looking? Uh, all right. I'm guessing that Republic ship that just docked isn't carrying friends of yours. I hope your talent for understatement is offset by your skill with a blaster. If not, then I fear our time together will be short indeed. Yeah, and I'm also good at running and drinking, Your Majesty. And even if you two aren't big friends of the Republic, that warship's the only way off this station. Something is wrong. I sense no one on board. You sense no one on board? Sense any assassin droids creeping up behind us like last time? Everyone here has been slain, yet there are few signs of battle. No carbon scoring, no blast of fire. This place has been hit by assassins of a different sort. Then what are we doing on this ship? We were better off in the facility. You two are supposed to be Jedi? You two are the worst Jedi I've ever met. We cannot go back into the facility. Oh, and go where? If the assassin machine was correct, then we cannot reach the hangar. Be silent. I need some time to think. Look, I don't mean to cast another shadow on this, but even if you could reach the ship you came in on, it wouldn't matter. You'll need the orbital drift charts to clear the Paragus asteroid field, unless you want to have the shortest flight out of Paragus ever recorded. Well, of course they have the asteroid drift charts in their Nava computer. They'd have to. Well, we'd have to get to the bridge. I mean, well, that's the biggest problem I can see. That is a sound plan for the moment. Let us go. Very funny. Right now, I'm better off with the two of you, so let's go. Oh, you mean with the huge crew we brought along with us? That's a brilliant idea. The two of you, be silent. We need a course of action, not division in our ranks. Otherwise, this ship will be our last stand. What is it? This is not the time for questions. They are assassins, and they are responsible for the attack on the Ebon Hawk and the Harbinger. I did not expect them to find us so quickly. We must escape this facility. If we remain here, then we will die. And your stubborn blindness to our situation is equally frustrating. I would have expected more from a war veteran, but yet you disappoint me. I came to warn you, Jedi. You know not what path you walk. This battle is mine alone. I am not defenseless. He cannot kill what he cannot see, and power has blinded him long ago. Run! I shall be along shortly. I sense you, my master. Faint. Weak. Your senses betray you. As you betrayed me. After all that's happened, still you live. You are difficult to kill. For one as limited as you, perhaps. To have fallen so far and learned nothing, that is your failing. The failure is yours. No longer do your whispers crawl within my skull. No longer do I suffer beneath teachings that weaken us. And now you run in search of the Jedi. They are all dead. Save one, and one broken Jedi cannot stop the darkness that is to come. Perhaps. We shall see. Well, now that we just killed a planet, maybe one of you can tell me what's going on. Because between assassin droids, a Sith Lord that looks like he sleeps with vibroblades, and being target practice for a Republic warship, I was better off in my cell. The Republic warship was the Harbinger. It was seized on its way to Telos by the Sith. They sought you, Jedi. Yes, to aid in the recovery effort there. Many roads lead to Telos, including ours. Not like we have much of a choice, the Paragus astrogation charts being what they are. It is where we must go, and where the Harbinger was bound before our unfortunate encounter on Paragus. You were difficult to find, but coincidence was on our side. When I learned that you were on the vessel, I knew the Sith would not be far behind. When we intercepted the Harbinger, it was crippled, drifting in space. It was a simple matter to board the vessel and rescue you. Unknown to me, however, the Sith were already on board. Just as we made the jump to hyperspace, they fired upon us, nearly destroying the Ebon Hawk. Whatever occurred on board the Harbinger had rendered you unconscious. Though your thoughts were faint, I was still able to find you sealed in one of the cargo holds. True. But as one trained in the Force, 
You know that true coincidences are rare. I do not know how the Ebon Hawk was able to make it to per- Be silent. We're having a conversation here. Repaired this ship. My eye. Next thing you know, it's going to claim credit for saving our skins. If that little noisemaker says it repaired the ship once, then it can prove it by doing it again. Go on. Get. Because you are the last of the Jedi. Once you are dead, then they have won. Whatever lies you tell yourself are of no consequence. The Sith believe you to be a Jedi Knight, and that is all that matters. Exile or not, the Sith believe you to be a Jedi Knight, and that is all that matters. The Sith will dare to accuse you of such. They believe you to be a Jedi Knight, and that is all that matters. The Jedi's civil war destroyed the Jedi. By the war's end, barely a hundred Jedi remained. Many fell in battle, and many more were seduced by Revan's teachings. Many Jedi blamed the teachings of the Jedi Masters for Revan's fall, and the civil war that followed. These Jedi turned from the Jedi Order and set out to find their own truth. No one knows where these lost Jedi travel now, perhaps. But they are Jedi no longer. If the Sith have not already slain them, then they will not help you, nor can you help them. Perhaps... And if they are not dead already, then their time runs short. The Sith will not spare any they find. The Jedi Academy on Dantooine is nothing more than a crater that echoes with the ghosts of dead Jedi. And the Jedi Temple on Coruscant lies empty. The waters in the Room of a Thousand Fountains have fallen still, in reverence to the fallen Jedi, and those now lost. That is not an easy question to answer. This threat is greater than you know, and I do not believe it is a battle that can be fought. We cannot hope to triumph against them alone. To stop them you will need weapons, allies, and a teacher. In the end I fear it may not be enough. Look, enough with the we already. For a time, yes. Telos may be such a place. All our paths seem to lead us there. Perhaps there, if you are willing, I can train you, help you to survive a while longer. You fought in the Mandalorian Wars, and it cost you everything— are you willing to sacrifice as much again? You are not listening to me. This is not like any field of battle you have ever fought in. Think carefully on your choice. If you choose to fight, if you choose war, it is a path few turn from once the first steps are taken. It carries with it a terrible price. And in the end, you may find you have nothing left to sacrifice. <laughs> like so many Jedi, you hear, but you do not listen. You have much to learn. <laughs> Your fool's words echo of a Jedi. You have much to learn, but we have spoken long enough, and my wound pains me. If you have other questions, find me in the crew quarters. There we will speak more. Hey, don't stop your long, boring rants on my account. I was just getting sleepy-eyed. Also in private, we will be mercifully free from the opinions of imbeciles and fools. That's the first smart thing I've heard since you two started talking. If I were you... I would see to that fool in the cockpit. I would not want him attempting to veer from our destination. He is a fool and an imbecile. His potential lies downwards, not up. Watch that one. His thoughts are slippery. I do not trust him, and nor should you. Such a man serves himself first and his allies next. Have you come for more answers? There is little more left to give. That does not surprise me. Any more than you hearing my thoughts when we were apart... The pain, however, was unexpected. If I could, I would have shielded you from it. Save your pity. I am here to save you, not the other way around. I do not need your condescension nor your lectures. If anyone needs training and guidance, it is you. I do not know if it is possible. And I fear that had the pain been more intense, the consequences would have been more extreme. I do not know. I fear that the consequences would have been more extreme then the sensation you would feel upon my death might be less than that, though much quicker. Possibly, yes, and I fear it works both ways. I would not wish to test it, nor should you. If any of the lost Jedi still lived, perhaps they would know a way to break such a connection, if they would even help an exile who turned on them to follow Revan to war. Perhaps the lost Jedi know a technique to cut such a link. I do not. To sever such a connection is not as simple as the Jedi casting out one of their own. If any still live... 
I doubt the Jedi Masters would even help one such as you. You, who turned your back on them to follow Revan to war. As they aided Revan in the Mandalorian Wars, do not be a fool. They will not intercede to save a traitor, unless, unless the knowledge saves them as well. Self-preservation is an effective technique to persuade or train the unwilling. If any yet live, where they walk is unknown to me. If we are meant to find them or their teachings, I suspect we shall come across them in our journey. Our current destination is as good a place as any to begin. The planet Telos, decimated by the Sith during the Jedi Civil War. Before the war, Jedi who failed their training were sent to the fields of Telos to serve the galaxy, not as Jedi knights, but as farmers and laborers. The destruction of Telos was complete. I doubt any Jedi remain. Yet there may be echoes of their passing. We shall see. Then I am left with nothing more than we had already. My faith in you and your ability to meet what comes. But we have talked much, you and I, and I am tired. I would see to that fool in the cockpit and remind him of our destination. I would not want him attempting to veer from Telos. He is a fool and an imbecile. His potential lies downwards, not up. Watch that one. His thoughts are slippery. I do not trust him, and nor should you. Such a man serves himself first and his allies next. I do not know. The Sith struck more swiftly than I thought, and they will not stop until they have you in their grasp. If you fall, all the galaxy will echo it. It does not matter where we go. It is not the destination that matters. It is the journey. All paths will take us to the end, whatever it may be, and no matter how strongly we fight against it. For now, we are bound for Telos, and that is enough. These Sith... They seek the death of all Jedi, as have all the Sith, since the Jedi Order was first split. Yes, the Jedi Civil War is not the first one of its kind. Thousands of years ago, the Jedi had another civil war that split the Order. It was a terrible thing. A faction among the Jedi abandoned the teachings of the Order, following their own path. They waged war on their fellow Jedi, a war that raged across the galaxy. But these fallen Jedi were cast out, defeated, and they retreated to worlds in the outer rim. Over time, they took on the mantle of the lords of the Sith, but in their hearts they never forgot the Jedi. The hatred for the Jedi Order burns in their veins like fire and echoes in their teachings. Revan tasted it, as Malak did. In a manner of speaking, they are different from Malak in that they are concerned only with the destruction of the Jedi. For them, it is all that matters all that ever mattered. It is a different war these Sith wage, a thing of silence and shadow. They strike from the darkness, hiding from the face of the galaxy until all Jedi are exterminated. After all the Jedi are gone, then the galaxy is theirs, no matter whether the Sith or the Republic rules. It is the dark side that shall reign, unchecked. I believe them to be the result of special teachings. Their apparent weakness against you is evidence of this. Those Sith assassins can sense their prey through the Force. It is like a hunger. They feed and grow stronger when they are near Force sensitives. The stronger their prey is in the Force, the deadlier they become. As long as you were cut off from it, you were able to evade their sight. But after Paragus, I fear that you will be no longer shielded from their eyes or the eyes of their masters. The stronger you grow, the more will come. Indeed. And was it the same as before? If my suspicions are correct, perhaps the damage the Jedi Council did was not as permanent as they thought. It is not an easy thing to cut one off from the Force. What did you believe? That you suddenly lost your connection with the Force without reason? Indeed it is. It is much like losing one's ability to listen or being put into a deep sleep, unable to awaken to the galaxy around you. Such a thing has been done before. When Jedi have pronounced sentence on their own, and exiled them as they did you. If not the Jedi, then what did you think was the cause of such a loss? War leaves many scars, but rarely does it blind one to the Force. If anything, conflict and challenge may make the connection stronger, more intense. No matter what horrors you experienced in the war, no matter who you served, it is unlikely that the Force would be lost to you unless another factor was involved. It is possible that such a thing can be undone. Still, even so... The chances of the Jedi undoing such a thing for a traitor is a slim thing at best, assuming they yet live. Our link may have had other consequences. Perhaps you can hear the Force again, distantly, through me. If so, then there is hope. I may be able to teach you, 
train you to feel the Force again, and if you will not allow me to help you, then other Jedi must train you, or undo the damage they have done, then I am your only hope, as you are mine. We are a sad pair, you and I, to defend the galaxy against such a thing. I fear there may be no other choice. The threat we face is grave. If you cannot defend yourself, then we have already lost. I offer to train you to become strong again, to know the ways of the Force, and to hear the Force sing within you as it once did. Then our training shall begin. Whenever I travel with you, I shall impart what I can to you through my words and presence. Very well. The choice is yours. When we travel, simply leave me behind, and you shall be saved from my counsel. Life never ceases to teach, fallen Jedi. It is only when one ceases to listen that we grow still and die. Do not honor me, fallen Jedi. Honor it by listening and learning. Do that, and perhaps we shall survive this thing, you and I. Much has happened in the galaxy in your absence, and since the defeat of the Mandalorians at Malachor V, it is a tale you already know well. Almost a decade ago, the Mandalorians began preying on the Republic, bringing the fires of war to many planets along the Outer Rim. Their predations continued, winning victory after victory, until the Republic finally begged the Jedi Council for aid. Indeed, the Jedi Council counseled caution and patience to assess the Mandalorian threat as the Outer Rim burned. Two Jedi Knights, Revan and Malak, defied the Jedi Council. They challenged the Mandalorian fierceness and brutality on the battlefield with a viciousness of their own. Revan's entrance into the conflict marked the true beginning and end of the war. It was Revan who drove the Mandalorians back into the unknown regions. Yes, I have heard tales of Malachor V and Revan's part in it. I know you served there in that final battle. It must have been a terrible thing. You speak the truth. The war's end was merely another beginning, and what seemed a victory for the Republic was far from it. Many believed the Mandalorians defeated at Malachor V, but the Mandalorians taught the Jedi much through battle, and so it was that Malak, Revan, and the Jedi that followed them discovered their true natures in the Mandalorian Crusade. But you know this. Consumed them? No. Taught them? Defined them? Yes. As Revan and Malak fought the Mandalorians in battle after battle, they grew to despise weakness, just as the Mandalorians did. In the end, the Mandalorians had taught them through conflict, shaped the Jedi, and turned them into a weapon against the Republic. Revan and Malak, and all the Jedi that served them, turned against the Republic and the Jedi Order. Jedi fought Jedi. Revan was ambushed by the Jedi and captured. Malak continued to wage war in his master's place, inflicting terrible wounds on the Republic, wounds that bleed still. As all Sith do without a strong enemy, the Sith turned on each other. Revan escaped the Jedi and returned to finish Malak, and that was the end of the Jedi Civil War. No one knows, certainly not I. Korriban lies in ruins, Revan is gone, and the blade of war she promised to stab into the heart of the galaxy has withdrawn. Where Revan wanders now... I do not know. It would seem that way from a certain point of view, perhaps. The Jedi Civil War left wounds that have yet to heal. We shall see if the Republic has the strength to survive. A culture's teachings, and most importantly the nature of its people, achieve definition in conflict. They find themselves or find themselves lacking. Too long did the Republic remain unchallenged. It is a stagnant beast that labors for breath and has for centuries. The Jedi Order was the heart that sustained its sickness. Now the Jedi are lost. We shall see how long the Republic can survive. We shall see. The Jedi Civil War cost the Republic much. The resources of the Sith seemed limitless. The Republic's was not. Fleets of warships, soldiers, and people were lost. Entire planets were decimated their inhabitants dead, or refugees. It is a great burden for any civilization to bear. And this new threat, it is a quiet thing. Unlike the Jedi Civil War, it drives at something deeper than the strength of the Republic. It is aimed at you. The Republic was never what was important, ever. It was but a shell that surrounds the Jedi, just as the teachings of the Jedi are a shell surrounding the heart of man. You see the war, the true war, has never been one waged by droids or warships or soldiers. 
they are but crude matter, obstacles against which we test ourselves. The true war is waged in the hearts of all living things, against our own natures, light or dark. That is what shapes and binds this galaxy, not these creations of man. You are the battleground, and if you fall, the death of the Republic will be such a quiet thing, a whisper, that shall herald the darkness to come, perhaps. It is sometimes difficult to find the truth in the Jedi Civil War. Was it the Republic that defeated Malak, or was it Revan? If it was Revan, then the Republic was never truly tested. No one knows, certainly not I. After defeating Malak, Revan left the Republic, and there are none who know where she has gone. It is said that the Sith remnants turned on themselves after Revan defeated Malak, reducing Korriban to ruin as the Republic still bleeds and struggles for life. After defeating Malak, Revan left the Republic, and there are none who know where he has gone. Did Revan fail? Or was it the failure of the Jedi teachings? A question for another time, perhaps. If you had followed them, then you would have learned the lesson of a follower. Perhaps it was fortunate you did not. You asked what had happened, and I am telling you. The past sent echoes into the future, and what seemed a victory for the Republic was far from it. Yet Revan triumphed. But you know this, for you were there at Malachor V, when the Mandalorians were crushed beneath Revan's might. As you know, Revan and Malak went to war against the Mandalorians, and you followed under Revan's banner. You will find no argument from me, save your arguments for the Jedi. They will not intercede to save a traitor unless such threats will gain little ground with the Jedi. Still, there is a certain truth in what you say. I suspect the Jedi will not intercede to save a traitor unless... Then you have chosen your death, and any knowledge the Jedi have will remain their secret. Unless... If you think a connection to one such as yourself gives me any comfort, then you would be wrong. I desire this no more than you do. This wound is a physical thing and will fade with time. It was necessary. Some things may only be learned from sacrifice. Of course it was. I knew what was necessary, and that I was the only one who stood between you and him. This isn't good. We've got to get off this station. What do you think the TSF is going to find at Paragus? That could bring the Sith... You know what? Forget it. As long as we're trapped here, it doesn't matter. We cannot stay in any one place too long, but our path has brought us here for a reason. I must meditate on this. In the meantime, we should rest. Yeah, you go ahead and meditate. As for me, I could use some sleep. It is difficult to say. I feel we came to Telos for a reason, but we may have spent too much time here already. Even if the Harbinger was destroyed at Paragus, more Sith could already be on their way. Still, there is a chance we might learn of other Jedi here, on the planet's surface. Jedi who might help us restore your abilities, or sever the link between us. Explain something to me. I do not have the years required, nor the desire to indulge you. If she served in the war, well, Jedi are supposed to be tough, capable. Yes, and what are they without the Force? Take the greatest Jedi Knight, strip away the Force, and what remains? They rely on it, depend on it more than they know. Watch as one tries to hold a blaster, as they try to hold a lightsaber, and you will see nothing more than a woman, or a man. A child. But to lose so much. I guess I didn't realize how much they relied on it. Do not be surprised. In many ways, even you are more capable than a Jedi. You could survive where they could not simply because you do not hear the Force as they do. It is irony of a sort, and it is why I tolerate your presence now. But such a loss of ability. For a Jedi, it seems so extreme. He has been gone from war some time. It is conflict that strengthens us, and isolation that weakens us, erodes us. Add to that that he turned away from war, did all that he could to forget it, and the last piece clicks into place. But we have spoken enough of this, and we do him a disservice by not speaking of this while he is present. Your speech is filled with maybes, and perhaps you are bold to make promises of healing while the world under your care burns and dies. You may be able to help. But there is always a price, is there not? Consider carefully. You have already begun to heal, to feel the force again. If so, then the offer is worthless. Smooth. Healing a dead planet is one thing, Chodo Habad, and healing a Jedi severed from the force is quite another. You speak well enough, Chodo Habad, but perhaps you see all this as your chance to exert your own hold over others. I do not approve of this alliance we have formed with Chodo Habat and his Ithorians. Habat has an agenda, 
and he hopes to tie you into it to use you to his own ends. Be that as it may, it would be best if you avoided such needless entanglements. You are too valuable to be caught up in the struggles of this planet. I cannot force you to listen to reason, only hope that you will grow past these infantile delusions of right and wrong. True, he may be able to help us locate the Ebon Hawk, but still, you must be vigilant. Nonetheless, you should heed my advice. That was ill done. What possessed you of the need to have him killed, indeed? But all the same, he was willing to surrender them at the threat of injury. I can see that. However, had you left him alive, we might have had use of him in the future. It is far better to have such a person, even as pathetic a creature as Opochano, to take advantage of in the future. Only kill when there is no further advantage to be gained, and no disadvantage to yourself. Good. Now let us be gone from here before Gren finds our involvement in this. True. He will not be able to run to Lieutenant Gren, but I feel that he was sufficiently frightened that he would keep silent. It won't make any difference unless we get away from here before the TSF comes. I see. From where I stood, it seemed to me that you were the one doing the pushing. I have wondered why you remain as well, Atten. Perhaps Choda Habat should turn his eyes to his own people if they truly suffer so. <sighs> well, this is familiar. Feels like my last time on Telos. Crashed the shuttle that time, too? No, Pazak. That was not the most pleasant landing I've endured. Next time we should perhaps seek out a more reputable pilot. You're welcome, Kreia. You know, if I weren't such a crack pilot, we could have hit the shield wall or one of those rock faces. Yes, our current situation is a vast improvement. I always feel a sense of calm when I walk the surface of Telos. The Athorians are truly amazing in their work. The force is strong here. Whether Chodo and his herd has anything to do with that is another matter. Can you feel anything? That is good. As a breeze may swiftly turn to a gale, you are slowly beginning to be reopened to the force. I see. Even that may be a good sign. Perhaps what you feel is the emptiness of the planet, its pain. We should press on. Lay down your weapons, and you shall not be harmed. I will not warn you again. Drop your weapons, or we shall take them from you. Do as they say. I sense we will come to no harm. The loss of your weapons shall be a temporary thing only, and it is necessary. There is much to be gained here without violence. Why is it that everywhere we go, I end up in a cell? I mean, why did they lock us up? What is this place? It is a training ground for Jedi. What? This ice hole? Yes. It bears the semblance of an academy. But where are all the students? Curious. You've got to be joking. What is a Jedi Academy doing out here in the middle of nowhere? It is a place hidden from the galaxy like the Academy on Dantooine. But this place... Oh, Atris, you have been clever. Atris? It's none of your concern. Well, the sooner we're out of here, the better. Two crazy Jedi are more than enough for me. No one told me we were going to be dumped in a nest of Jedi. And what is it about this place that causes you such fear? What do you mean? We're in the middle of a bunch of Jedi. You know how they are. No, I do not. Not in the way you seem to. What? What are you doing? Get out of my head! Stop struggling. Let me follow the current deep, deeper to its source. Stop! Stop! Ah! Ah. With the fear is mingled guilt. It squirms in you like a worm. And the why... Ah, and there is its heart. You surprise me. I could not feel it before. Your feelings are a powerful shield indeed. Do not worry, Atten. If he is a Jedi, he will forgive. And if he is not, he will not care. You can't tell him, please. I'm asking you. I don't want him to... Think less of you. I hardly think that's possible. Still, there is no shame in what you ask. We all wage war with the past, and it leaves its scars. I will not speak of yours, Atten, but there is a price for such things. What? What price? There are those who wage war and those who follow them. You are a crude thing, murderer, but you have your uses. You know how important this man we travel with is. Even one such as you can feel it. You will serve him until I release you. And if I refuse? You will not. If you do, then my silence will be broken. And then, Atten, you will be broken. You fear the Jedi, and rightly so. 
If Atris learns of your choices, you will never leave this place. But whatever fear you hold of the Jedi, know that if you disobey me, that my punishment will make you beg for the death that has long hounded you. Wipe the fear from your mind. You will not find blind obedience a difficult master. You chose it once. You will learn to embrace it again. I don't know how you became such a manipulative witch, but why a vicious old scowl like yourself would even bother with me is a bigger mystery. No game of Dejaric can be won without pawns, and this may prove to be a very long game. You are a slippery one. Your thoughts difficult for even one such as I to read. I suspect the self-loathing that squirms within you gives you a curious strength. Your spirit, as diseased as it is, refuses to allow you to give up, no matter what threats you face and whatever wreckage you leave behind you. I feel you have crossed our path for a reason. Perhaps even you, at the right moment, may be able to turn aside disaster. If so, your potential is not yet spent. Fine. I'll be your pawn. But I still think you've got the wrong man. Perhaps. But someone has to fly the ship, and the Force is a hard thing to predict. You have crossed our path for a reason. Our path brought us here for a reason. And now I know why. The past is here, and it must be met before the future can be set in motion. Uh, more Jedi speak. Care to explain? No. I've wasted enough time with you. Sleep, murderer, and be silent. I need no distractions. A critical moment approaches. Why have you approached me? Hey, do all these women look alike? <laughs> Not like I'm complaining. I mean, it's... Well, it's uh, interesting. They are Ichani. It is not unusual for their children to share similar features from the same parents. If you have a reason for approaching me, speak it. Before you go, Exile, a question for you, if I may ask it. You have touched the Force. What does it feel like? Please, I wish to know. It is like a cloud, a mist that drifts from living creature to creature, set in motion by currents and eddies. It is the eye of the storm, the passions of all living things turned into energy, into a chorus. It is the rising swell at the end of life, the promise of new territories and new blood, the call of new mysteries in the dark. Then tell me of its absence. It is standing atop the summit of a great mountain, the winds tearing about you, then finding yourself buried alive, trapped, helpless, and alone. It is like having the energy of youth, then feeling the cloak of years fall upon you, and knowing you are weak, fragile, and a thing easily discarded. It is knowing what you want to say and never finding the words. It is a chorus replaced with silence, hearing teachings without meaning. It is like a beloved pupil to whom you have shared everything, sacrificed everything, and then having them turn from you and forget all you were. I see. Thank you both. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge with me. Did you find what you came for? There was something from your past here, something unresolved. I feel we did not come to this place by chance. You were led here. This woman who resides here, she did something to you once, something that hangs upon you still. There is a Jedi here, perhaps, in that you are correct. Yet there are no students, and this woman, this Atris, surrounds herself with those who cannot feel the Force. Curious. Plans are fragile things, and life often dashes expectations to the ground. Perhaps students will come to her in time. For now, she is surrounded by those who cannot feel the Force. No, her servants are not Jedi. Their minds are walls, trained to resist tricks of the mind. This discipline blinds them to the Force as well, even if they were Force-sensitive. Invade the mind of another? It is not something done carelessly, or when there is nothing to be gained. Yes, her servants are not Jedi. Their minds are walls, trained to resist tricks of the mind. Very well, let us depart. <sighs> He's only sleeping. It seems the journey here has fatigued him. <gasps> I see it now. The act has left its marks. Ah, killing such a one could prove difficult and unwise. Yet she distracts you, that is clear, and that may be reason enough. Such distractions could prove fatal against the enemies we face. Direct action is not always the best way. It is a far greater victory to make another see through your eyes than to close theirs forever. Yet all that lives feels... And where something feels, there is weakness. Why you, of course. 
You are the gravity around which all her actions rotate. You exert a stronger influence than you know. Be her foil, her challenge, and eventually she will see things your way. Oh, yes. Natural leaders do such things to followers, whether they be simple criminals or old women such as myself. You are the gravity around which all her actions rotate. You exert a stronger influence than you know. Whatever her charm or lack thereof, you must deal with it. Unresolved events from our past can create wounds in the present and the future. Very well, though I cannot be blamed for the intensity of your thoughts on this matter or the depths to which they reach. Be warned. Unresolved events from our past can create wounds in the present and the future. And, more importantly, they can distract you, weaken you. It could prove fatal against the enemies we face. If that is all you wish to hear, then I have nothing more to say. Let us depart. Is it? Perhaps so, and perhaps not. I felt as much, quite strongly, in fact. I suspected there was something from your past here, something unresolved. I feel we did not come to this place by chance. You were led here. Are you certain you're ready to depart? I sense some unrest in you. I had thought that would bring you some peace, yet I still sense some unrest in you. We serve the Jedi. We do not question them. Yet... Atrus has told us that the work here at Telos may pay for similar efforts in many worlds along the rim that were destroyed when the Jedi turned on each other. She has said the Jedi Order needs such a foundation if it is to rebuild. She faults the teaching of many of the Jedi Masters as the spark of the Jedi Civil War. Indeed. A most curious reason for a war. Atrus has said that if Revan and Malak had been properly instructed in the ways of the Jedi, they never would have fallen. And nor would you, Exile. That is unknown to me. I have never observed Atrus to teach Jedi, nor would I wish to. Yes, to teach one needs students. I have seen few of those since our arrival. But were the choices you had dictated by your training? A curious question, difficult to answer. Oh, please. At least ease off the cryptic talk until we're back on the ship. Ancient irrigation channels still lie beneath the surface of Telos waiting to be used again for the reconstruction efforts, controlled from this facility. So, Atris resides within the frozen heart of this world. That is a peculiar way of seeing it, but it can be described by such an abstract, yes. The construction of this door is like nothing I've seen on Telos, and it is not the same as the rest of the facility here. Hmm. Perhaps it is a meditation chamber of some sort. Indeed. But of course, what does one more matter to our journey? I have had enough of this. I will be in my chambers. Yeah, me too. I'll be in my chambers. But since I don't have any, I guess I'll just go to the cockpit like I always do. If she's coming with us, she gets the cargo hold. Might remind her how fun it is to get locked up. I, I do not believe in Atrus's teachings. Not any longer. I believe that she condemned you unjustly, and that your justifications for going to war were the right ones. Sometimes one must fight. It is the way of things. Battle defines us, and those that refuse to fight are simply afraid of themselves. No, she speaks the truth. We will take this servant of Atris with us. That is your fault, not mine. Regardless, we may speak more of this later. We cannot take her back to Telos, and so there is little we can do until we reach another planet. Why are you here? Because I told him. Told him everything. Ah, and now you are free? Yeah, so no more threats, no more of your requests. You and me, we're done. Did you ever think I truly held you? You're more of a fool than I thought. What truly held you was you, and let me show you why. I once held the galaxy by the throat, as you once held her by the throat, and let her die slowly, and your emotion at that point is what you fear. I can unlock that part of you any time I wish. It is a simple thing, the human mind. Once it feels something strongly, it becomes etched in the memory, the subconscious. Shall I show you? That part of you that hungered to kill Jedi, that took pleasure from it? Or perhaps you will continue to listen to my counsel, and I shall ignore your pathetic attempts at freedom. Now leave me, murderer. I have nothing further to say to one such as you. Did you know I once held the galaxy by the throat? No. 
you did not. I wielded power like you cannot imagine. Everything I saw was awash with possibilities, spreading outwards, touching everything else. I saw all of that, all that the force is. And only when it was ripped from me did I truly see it. And I know what lies buried within you, that you hide with your desperate thoughts, your guilt, your lusts. I did not realize there were more lies left in you, and to lie easily to such an ally, you are indeed worthy of contempt. Shove your lectures and your threats and your requests. You and me were done. Because I told her. Told her everything. Because I told him. Told him everything. Just like you asked. And did he believe you? Yeah. Yeah, I think he did. You have done well. Now we shall see what happens. Because I told her. Told her everything. Just like you asked. And did she believe you? Yeah. Yeah, I think she did. So now you know. Yeah. That one we picked up on Dantooine, he's a spy for the Republic. Yet she still listens to him. Is he now? How curious. But not unexpected. You knew about this? You knew he was a traitor and you let him on board? Oh, but there are so many betrayals already. The fact that one serves the Republic is minor a betrayal compared to hers. If she has chosen him, then she has chosen the Republic, and all that means. What are we gonna do? For now, nothing. But remember your loyalties. I will call upon them in time. It is time. All right. Where are we going? To a place you know well. There much will be revealed. Any regrets, Atten? No, I thought I would. I just feel cold. Nothing. Keep that feeling close. You will need it where we travel. The more worlds we travel to, the more questions I have. It's not just the hardships of the people, but something more. You are right. But there is something more at work here. Yes. These dead worlds, they... Well, they have a pattern to them. They were all touched by the Mandalorian Wars and the Jedi Civil War. But sometimes, well, I feel as if they are all connected in some other way. The attacks on Qatar, Telos itself, the decay on Dantooine. Something is wrong with life. The connections have been damaged, sickened. Sometimes I feel like I almost understand, and then it just slips away. So close. Is there? Must be hearing things. But for a moment. Jedi. Jedi. Betrayer. All thoughts of me will slide from your vision, from your mind, like water. You know who I am but you will be unable to voice it, to remember it. What does a Jedi see? Only what I allow them to see. At last do you understand, tiny Jedi. You? Who are you? What are you doing on this sh- Enough. What did you see in the web of worlds that have died? What did you see when you saw it through the Force? I see the death of the galaxy. Of life. At first, I thought it was just conquest. But it's more terrible than that. It's an echo, spreading outwards, killing everything. It's not possible. You are a wasted pawn of the Republic, young one. You could have been so much more, even with your wide-eyed innocence, your naive love for others. Now you understand the magnitude of what is being done. I know you. Not even the markings of the dark side can hide it. Why have you done this? I? Do you think I seek the death of all living things? There is no victory in such things. I do not want to win our war like this, little Jedi. When I win, I wish it to be because I was right, my teachings true. How long have you been here, among us? You know the truth. I have always been here, watching and listening to the echo you have found. You know its source and what must be done. I will not let you hurt her. Little Jedi, you cannot stop me. But you will forget this. Your mind is worse than the others, so open, so trusting. Your feelings for her are your weakness. Yet I will gift you with this. You will remember what you have discovered when the time is correct. Know that you have seen what formerly only I knew. Now we shall see if you have the strength to stop what comes. You know what the choice is. If you don't warn them, then the Republic will fall. 
all those countless lives, innocent lives. Or the one. The choice is yours, Jedi. It is time for you to leave. You are harming him with your presence. It is time for you to leave. You are harming her with your presence. I said, it is time. There is a world on the outer rim surrounded by mass shadows. Past the graveyard of Mandalorian warships, this planet suffers. Crushed in gravity's fist, to walk on its surface is to feel it crushing every cell of your being. It is like being buried alive until it seems you will never breathe again. What manner of creature would have birthed such a thing? Nothing human, to be sure. If you dare voice your opinions again, Iridonian, you will forget yourself for a time. Return to your machines and trouble me no more. Serve the exile until it is your time to die and it will be enough. Something troubles you, servant of Atris. Leave me be. I have seen what you have seen, the slow seduction of the Sith. Perhaps we are more allies than you know. I fear the exile has let his feelings for the Miraluka affect his judgment and it will doom him. There is still hope. I do not believe so, and neither do you. You have seen his stance, his movements. They mirror hers, not yours. But do not mistake my intent. We are together in this, and if we stand together, we may yet prevent a greater tragedy. I do not believe you, and I do not trust you. What you think is of no concern. What the exile thinks is what should concern us. Something troubles you, servant of Atris. You were right. There is no defeat in admitting such a thing. What can be done? We wait. Patiently, our time will come. You are not to blame, servant of Atris. You only wished what was best for him, and he cast it aside. He is the one to blame, to forsake such a gift. I feel that there is a lesson in such a thing. Perhaps you might have done more, but it is of no matter now. Who is there? Who I am is not the question. I am Atris, Jedi Master. The last historian of the Jedi. The last of the Jedi. Those are titles, words you cling to as the darkness falls around you. You are that which has attacked the Jedi. You are Sith. Sith is a title, yes, but like you, the title is not who I am. It is not what I believe. For you, it is different. Know that there was once a Darth Traer, and that she cast aside that role, was exiled, and found a new purpose. But there must always be a Darth Traer, one that holds the knowledge of betrayal, who has been betrayed in their heart, and will betray in turn. You have bathed in the knowledge of the Sith, but there is not enough truth in such teachings. But it will be a step for you. How did it happen? Search your heart. It was never battle that called to you, never battle that caused you to fall. Alakor V has touched many things, and it casts its echoes still. Why did she betray me? You betrayed yourself. Do not blame the exile. And unlike you and I, there is still a chance that one may be saved, the one that you cast out. Where is the exile? I had thought... Oh, she will come, but it will be too late to save either of us. It is such a quiet thing to fall, but far more terrible is to admit it. Your mistress awaits. She has much to share with you. Let us say that Malachor V has touched many things, and it casts its echoes still. Were you here when the exile arrived? Atris, I have always been here. Yes, I was here both times when the exile was brought before you. It is not the first time we have met, Atris. I was here before. With the exile? Yes, both times. Who are you? I was the one who asked him to be exiled. I did as you asked, so long ago. You, you seem familiar to me. You have gathered Sith holocrons, Sith teachings from across the galaxy. It is why you have chosen servants who cannot feel the Force. And most importantly, they cannot feel what you have become. I have sought to preserve the Jedi Order, and I have gathered all that I know of the Sith to this place, so I might find them and stop them. I had wondered if any of these holocrons had survived Dantooine. You have taken relics from one destroyed planet to the devastation of another. It was always intended for the Jedi to retreat to Telos should Dantooine be attacked, taking all their lore with them. We could not allow the tragedy at Osis to happen again. Such an act marked Telos for destruction. It is why the Sith came here, though the fleet commanders did not know why. It is why Revan ordered its destruction to mark the beginning of the Jedi's civil war. 
It was a message that there would be no place for the Jedi to retreat, to hide. When the Sith attacked, I felt Telos die. Turbo lasers fell like lightning upon the landscape, as they did on Dantooine, and so many died, so many voices, screaming in pain. Yes, such acts leave their mark on the galaxy. Their cries travel far, though few can hear them. I would not be surprised if Revan left other gifts beneath the surface of the planet. Much can be buried beneath graveyards that will never be found. The greatest technique is to do the same without resorting to the Force. It is far more effective to persuade one to do your will without calling on the Force. Do not use the Force as a crutch. You have survived long without it. Do not use it to weaken you. To rely on the Force for such trivial matters will weaken you. Such is the pull of the dark side. Be warned, once you walk down that path to the dark side, it will forever control your destiny. Take such actions if you must, but do not let it consume you as it has others. The dark side leaves its marks upon the flesh and upon the galaxy. Know that the more such acts you commit, the more they will mark you. And so you waste effort upon another. To show such compassion weakens the giver and the recipient. To bestow mercy on another is but another way of proclaiming your superiority. Yes. Have you come with questions? That crystal is bonded to you. Through you it acquires its character and strength, and through it your power is enhanced. There, now it is fully in tune with you again. Should your power increase or your resolve change, speak to me again about this matter, and I will help you refocus your crystal. Then ask, and I will do my best to answer. The beast is a lesson in strength. Learn that lesson, then you will understand. Perhaps not. Then you are correct. There is nothing you may learn from the beast, and clearly I am wrong. The beast's strength is prodigious, and you can learn much from it, or draw upon it. His life can be a beacon in the dark places of the galaxy where there is no life. Speak with him. Discern his nature. Perhaps then it will become clear, because he is life at its most primitive. And he represents what happens when civilization comes to primates. The illusion that we are something more than our instincts. The beast is a lesson. Learn that lesson, then you will understand. Indeed. And what is that? Yes. Now the question is why. Ah, you are a perceptive one indeed. In this instance you are correct. All that strength, that anger. Yet it is held in check, restrained by his beliefs, his doubt. Everyone is made up of events in their past, and it forms walls around one's spirit, or breaks such walls down. The mind makes some powerless, and gives strength to others. In a manner of speaking, yes. But it is more complicated than that. Everyone is made up of events in their past. It makes some powerless, and gives strength to others. It is because he is not ready to give up his ties yet. It is much like Jedi who will not give up their code. It is to surrender yourself, to make yourself a slave to a teaching or belief that makes it so that belief will always rule you. I ask nothing, but since you beg a question, I will ask it. Are you prepared to give up all that is a Jedi entirely? Until then you will always be weak. No, the Jedi lie with you still. You have no choice in the matter. But your willingness to break those ties is a lesson in strength. To believe in an ideal is to be willing to betray it. It is something no Sith or Jedi has ever truly learned. That is the lesson of strength. Yet that is not the only lesson that the beast can teach us. Not only does one's will control one's strength, but one's will can control and draw upon the strength of others. Surely you have felt the beast's presence on board this ship, stalking, restless. It is a more primal connection you feel, and the hunger you feel does not stem from Han Ha. It is something you may draw upon, his very life, if need be. He does not realize how deeply his life debt runs, but he will. When you suffer, call upon that hunger, and the beast shall be that upon which your will may draw strength. Reach out, feel his presence within the ship, clawing at you, pacing. Feel the rumbling of the hull, the metal around you like a cage, and the building anger, the blood that rises behind the eyes, a bloodlust that cannot be sated. If you accept it, you will find your strength increase and your vitality return to you faster with every breath. Good, you know it now. The predator-prey relationship, the strong feeding on the weak, it will serve you. Because his life is not his own, he walks, but he is dead, and there is a use for one such as he, along with all of his kind. Are you sure? It will grant you strength, vitality for the times ahead. Forsake it, deny it, and you will deny power. Ah, 
And that is the choice of Malachor V at last. You have made a strange choice, a unique choice. Very well, I accept it. And know that that is the true lesson of strength, to turn away from strength that is not your own. I'm always testing you. Never forget that. Always be on your guard, otherwise you may learn something. Ignore the surface sensations. I am attempting to teach you something greater here. I have felt as much from you, but listen to me. No, I feel there may have been a time when his people felt the force, but that is only a suspicion. Whether one can feel the force or not has little to do with their strength. Think more upon this. The answer will come to you, or it will not. Think more upon this. The answer will come to you, or it will not. Perhaps you should think upon the matter more, and I think you will discover where real strength lies. Have you learned the lesson of strength? What of them? Perhaps. There is truth in what the servant of Atreus says. Much may be communicated in the motions of battle. It is a picture, a dance against someone trying to describe that motion. I have learned that we do not need to kill her. But if we want one that has truly fallen to the dark side, we should look elsewhere for our allies. I believe she should serve our purposes. She is the doorway that may lead us to her lord if it proves necessary, or bring him to us. You will learn quickly, perhaps. The blinded one is more of an unknown quality, however. Oh, I hope so, exile. I hope so for all the reasons I have just described. That is what I said. And I will gladly turn any such blade pointed at us and send it stabbing into the heart against anyone who dares to harm you. It is good we see this in the same perspective. There are many among the Jedi who would openly object to such things. And why is that? Please illuminate me. Any being that gives up its will, that allows itself to be used in such a way, deserves such a fate. Yes, that is what I am saying, but I did not expect you to say such. Perhaps it is time I considered my methods in this instance, but I will not deny that she could prove useful to us. Of course, how quickly I have forgotten such things. I shall be more careful of speaking my intentions in the future. Then you may kill whenever you wish. I shall not stop you. I only ask you realize what it will do to you. Perhaps. The Ichani believe that much may be communicated in the motions of battle. He, if he can truly be called a man any longer, is one of the dark lords that pursues you. I do not think he knows what you are. Not yet. He spared the Miraluka, and that may have been the last shred of feeling that exists within him. Keep his slave close to you. I suspect there was a reason he spared her, and perhaps a reason that she survived when the rest of her people and the Jedi did not. Entertain what illusions you will. I am too tired to argue them with you. One cannot have power of that magnitude that her master possesses and still think and perceive the universe as we do, as most of us do. I had hoped that you would not have to confront him, but her presence here has changed all that. You will have to meet him in battle. You must be prepared to sacrifice the blinded one. Perhaps her death will buy you the time you need to deal with her master. Then you have a chance. Without her death, I do not know if he can be stopped. If you have such power, then I would make use of it. There is no need to dirty your hands when you can convince another to drive a blade into their own heart. Oh, you have promise. But wait until you have more years fall upon you, and you will see what a shell your heart will become. It is a technique that is almost as old as the Sith themselves. It is a means of severing connections between life the force, and feeding upon the death it causes. It cannot be taught. It can only be gained through instinct, through experiencing its effects firsthand. Yes, and he fed upon its destruction. It will sustain him for a time. Power, do you think so? You would be wrong. There is no strength in the hunger he possesses, and the will behind his power is a primal thing, and it devours him as he devours others. His mere presence kills all around him, slowly feeding him. He is already dead. It is simply a question of how many he kills before he falls. Nothing is impossible with the Force. It is an energy that flows through all living things. And like energy, it may be harnessed, channeled, and consumed at times. It may even be a substance that can burn and ignite. Do not think of his power as one would a weapon, or one of your warships of the Republic. It is terrible, but it is still a subtle thing. The sect of assassins that chase you feed on the Force. What he does is simply the pinnacle of what they could achieve in time. And that is why they and their techniques must be wiped out. 
no one again must experience and learn what her master did. As much as one may use the force to bolster the wills and strengths of others, the reverse is possible, though not often used. Instead of sending one's will through connections in the force, instead such connections are drawn upon, fed upon, and drained completely. Then you understand how terrible such a power is, and why it must be ended. It is an empty road to the dark side, and by travelling it the price is death before one's time. He is a breach in the force, capable of consuming the lives of those around him. Sometimes the touch is slow, as it is with his crew. It is not something he can direct or focus, much like hunger itself. He is more of a hole in the force than a living thing. Force sensitives and worlds rich in the force draw him. The Miraluka world was one such place. That is why where the Jedi gather, Jedi will die. He will feel it, unless they mask their presence. But Katar called out as a beacon to him, and he could not resist it. And he cares nothing for the Sith, or its teachings, or the Jedi. And when the Jedi are dead, her master will feed on the galaxy, the Republic, and eventually consume the Sith as well. There is no future in the empty galaxy he sees, and that is why he must be stopped. The breach must be sealed before his power grows beyond what even we can hope to stop. And when the Jedi are dead, he will feed on the galaxy, the Republic, and eventually consume the Sith as well. Because it is not something that can ever truly be controlled, and it leaves nothing to conquer in its wake. And it rules him, not the other way around. It has its own will, its own instincts. Perhaps he is bound to her, as I am bound to you. If so, there may be a death served by hers, because Atris is a threat. And as much as she would try to use us against you, so may we use her servants against her. Do not see every enemy as an enemy. See them instead as an ally, whether they realize it or not. This situation may yet work to our advantage. She did nothing to your eyes that was not already there. She has forced this upon you, but such crude methods are the markings of the Sith. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Feel this ship around you. Listen to my words. Hear the sound of the handmaidens training in the cargo hold, her hands cutting the air. The welding of the droid as it goes about its work. Now stretch out. Hear the rumble of hyperspace, the hum of the hyperdrive. Ignore distractions and focus on my voice. The breathing of the blinded one as she meditates in the dark. Now listen deeper past her breathing and listen. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear, for in fear lies death, and... You are strong indeed. What you heard were surface thoughts only, but it is something that masters have trained for for years and never learned. That is enough for today, and I must rest. That is not the real question you should ask. Is such listening enough to perceive the world around you? It is not, because to listen to the thoughts of another is much like attempting to see the universe only with your eyes. It is equally limiting. Now leave me be. I must rest. You know what you heard. It is what I hear, constant whispers of wants, desires, lies told to oneself to stave off the darkness around us. If that is your belief, so be it. There is nothing wrong with my sight, if that is your question. I see all that I need— Though the seeing of things flesh and blood has failed me some time ago, they were distractions only. There is nothing wrong with my eyes. They simply have atrophied from use. They are adequate to distinguish shapes, silhouettes. If need be, I could heal them, restore my sight. But sight can prove a distraction. When one relies on sight to perceive the world, it is like trying to stare at the galaxy through a crack in the door. But that is a lesson for another time. You must learn to see crude matter for what it is before the veil is lifted. Does it matter? Of course it does. Such titles allow you to break the galaxy into light and dark, categorize it. Perhaps I am neither, and I hold both as what they are, pieces of a whole. 
Know that I am your teacher, and that is enough. What do you wish to hear? That I once believed in the Code of the Jedi? That I felt the call of the Sith? That perhaps once I held the galaxy by its throat? That for every good work that I did, I brought equal harm upon the galaxy? That perhaps what the greatest of the Sith Lords knew of evil they learned from me? What would it matter now? There is only so much comfort in knowing such things, and it is not who I am now. Take what strength you may steal from me. That is all I need be to you. In you all my hopes rest for the future, for the Force. If it means so much to you, then this I swear to you upon my life, upon our lives, that when your training is complete I will answer everything. There shall be no more shadows between us, only truth that exists between master and apprentice. Learn from me my mistakes and use that knowledge to become greater than I. That is all I ask of you, and that is all I desire. Or what? Shall you kill me? Hurt me? You would only be inflicting harm on yourself. Perhaps you will keep me here on this ship prisoner, unable to leave. Is that the way of a Jedi? Or perhaps you will simply cast me out, exile me? It matters not. I know her as much as I know any Jedi. If you have other questions, you may ask those, but on Atris, I can provide you no answers that you cannot find on your own. Atris herself is not as familiar to me as perhaps she should be, yet I feel I know her, yes. Because Atris's path is one I walked long ago, and it is a chapter of my life that has been read and closed. She has taken the first steps, I think. We shall see. Surely you felt the righteous anger? the spoken judgments, the lack of forgiveness. I was a historian once, gathering the relics of the Jedi, learning the ancient mysteries. Always there were more questions. One quickly learns that the Jedi Code does not give all the answers. If you are to truly understand, then you will need the contrast, not adherence to a single idea. That is why Atris and the others blamed me, sentenced me, they believed me responsible for Revan's fall. You have already asked much. I do not wish to speak of this any longer. I misspoke before, and I do not wish to choose my words unwisely again. Leave this be. Perhaps I think it is fair to say that few did. Ah, and what did you wish to know of Revan? Revan had a mother and father, parents, ancestors, like all Jedi do. And when he awakened to his potential, I was there to see it. But where he was born, where he came from, I do not know, any more than I know where he walks now. Some said that Revan was born in the outer regions, beyond the Rim, and that's what called to him during the Mandalorian Wars. And after, it was the call of home fall. Ah, already you presume much. You were there at Malachor. Revan's choices were always his own. It was not teaching or circumstance or example, it was him. Is that what he was? Or was he always true to himself, no matter what personality he wore? And there is something that the Council may never understand, that perhaps Revan never fell. The difference between a fall and a sacrifice is sometimes difficult, but I feel that Revan understood that difference more than anyone knew. I do not believe the Jedi Council changed Revan, as they claimed. They merely stripped away the surface and allowed the true self to emerge again, someone who was willing to wage war to save others. But that is my belief since I knew Revan from long ago, as a master knows their apprentice. The galaxy would have fallen if Revan had not gone to war. Perhaps he became the Dark Lord out of necessity to prevent a greater evil. I do not wish to discuss this. Sometimes there is such a thing as knowing too much of one's teacher. It generates contempt. He came to me, yes, both before and after, before Revan knew himself. And after... In the times when Revan was coming to his own and learning he was more than he had been told. At one time, Revan was my Padawan, in times past, long ago. But Revan, when he had learned all he could, had other masters, that fool Jar, and other Jedi on other planets. He learned from each, but in the end, he turned back to me. When he realized there was nothing more to be learned from the Jedi except how one could leave them forever, Revan was power. It was like staring into the heart of the Force. Even then you could see the Jedi he would slay etched on his soul. You are different. When I look at you, it is like staring at the death of the Force. I know more, but it may not be enough for the answers you seek. Ignorance. 
and perhaps they do not remember or care. It is of no consequence to me or to them, am I? Then perhaps you should know there are techniques in the Force where one can cloud the memory of others, make their presence so small as to be unnoticed. And on the worlds where we have encountered these Jedi, there is much life and death where sensing such things is difficult. As I said, it is of no consequence to me or to them. No, but if I did, you would never know, so my words only carry as much worth as you believe them to. But perhaps you will understand this, that perhaps it is important to me that you see me and my actions uncloaked. It is important that your judgments, whether be good or bad, stem from seeing me as I truly am. I did not ask you to trust me, only that you listen to what I have to tell you. But thank you. Then you are learning quickly. Distrust is an effective shield and should be carried always. Do not let them discover what makes you what you are before you do, or the consequences for the galaxy will be terrible, because you learned to live without the Force, and that is something that the galaxy is not ready to accept, because you learned to live without the Force, and that is something that the Jedi are not ready to accept, nothing more than we already know, and anything else I know would be useless. There is danger in such knowledge, even if I were certain of the ones who hunt you, I know of them, yes, and how much like beasts they had become. Combined, united against the Jedi, they command legions of Sith. But above these legions, there are three who must be stopped. As long as any one of them lives, then we, and all life, are doomed. One bathes in pain, feeds on it for sustenance. The other has ceased being a living being so consumed by hunger that he has forgotten his own flesh. And the last is a creature of betrayals, for without such things there is no hope. And betrayal, and by a machine that I will not abide. Machines, always did Revan use them to inflict his will on the galaxy, whether in war or in assassination. His passion for such tools, for things dead to the Force, defies me. He would have loved a human droid such as you, dead to the Force, a shell that would carry out his orders. It is no matter. It is a device, and now it is broken. You are spending time with the servant of Atris. I knew her mother. She was a Jedi knight, a master, named Aaron Kai. Jedi are forbidden to have children. And when the crime finally came to light almost a decade later, Kai was exiled. She joined the Mandalorian Wars after the shame of her birth was revealed. Revan welcomed her. And she was said to be a skilled warrior, beautiful and strong in the Force. The Force flows strongly in the blood of those born from Force sensitives. I doubt that Aaron was any different. If the servant of Atris is of her blood, then the potential lies within her. If you train her, if you teach her the ways of the Jedi, you will be asking her to break her oath to Atris. It would be best not to train her, and let the bloodline die with Telos. Should she? By whose judgment should such truths be revealed? I do not have such arrogant presumptions. The Jedi separate children from their parents as they did you. It is because family exerts a powerful influence on one's development. I am merely saying that revealing such things can have profound consequences, nothing more. Before you continue questioning me, I hope your thoughts in the matter concerning this servant of Atris are clear. Spend time with her if you must, but recognize where your true loyalties lie, to the galaxy and yourself. Ah, oh, so then perhaps I was mistaken in my judgment. Never have you wondered what it would mean in the Ichani rituals if the two of you sparred and fought, and you won, completely and utterly? If perhaps she would give in, surrender herself to you, few are the thoughts that can hide in the shadows of your mind. Exile. And such passions are not strength, but erosion. No? Then perhaps I was simply mistaken. Very well. I shall keep such judgments to myself. I cannot help but hear you at times, and such curious thoughts they are, not at all like a Jedi, but I shall keep such thoughts to myself, I think, and you should as well. Ah, so it is loyalty you claim when you squander away your time with her. Lectures? No, merely an observation, and obviously I was mistaken. Before you go, a word of caution. 
Ah, that was an interesting choice of words indeed. She has sworn not to follow the path of the Jedi by her oath, but even that oath is limited. One does not need to be Jedi to learn the ways of the Force. I suspect it cares little for our codes and philosophies. Once there were only Jedi. I wonder what evil was in such days. And to think once there were no Jedi at all. Perhaps the Force defies such rigid classification of its followers. But we were speaking of the servant of Atris. I would caution you to be careful of your interaction with her. She is not as tempered as you. I propose nothing except what you choose to read into my words. But no, I would not advocate such teachings either. I am only saying that she has sworn not to follow the teachings of the Jedi, and that is a curious distinction in her oath, as you will. But there may be a point where you have no choice. You have a curious influence on those around you, as you will. But there may be a point where you have no choice. As I have said, you exert a curious influence on those around you. You must train yourself first. The time will reveal itself. Yet if you persist as you have building her trust, then you will be training her, whether you know it or not, until the choice is hers, not yours. You have befriended the seer. Her species does not see as we do. They perceive the galaxy through the Force, and it is how she found you. It is a rare gift squandered on her people. The Sith carry the battle to you, and you spare them. And as we travel, the empty places of this ship are filled. I hope your thoughts in this matter are clear. In saving her, you may destroy yourself, and do not mate with her. Whatever you may feel, whatever urges consume you, do not let them control you. Such a union would breed difficulties. Oh, I think it is. Our lives are twined. I cannot have it twined with another. Like the servant of Atris, this one has other masters. Though blind, she has ties to darkness. Her presence here is a threat to us, to you. Do not underestimate her or her loyalty. Then you are learning. Perhaps. I am not convinced. I doubt such acquisitions will prove easy, and they would not help you anyway. To show mercy to a Sith is to invite a blade to your throat. You walk a fool's path, and I will not aid you in helping her. Did he? And what do you make of that? The Mandalorians were right to respect you on the field of battle. The Jedi are gone, vanished. Now an entire planet of Force sensitives wiped clean of life. And now this slice of the galaxy is blind. It is no coincidence. The two events are tied. I fear you are right. And I fear it may prove more than that. War is a hunger. And there are spirits in the galaxy whose hunger is never satisfied. But there is little to be done about it now. Watch the seer carefully. She may reveal more. You are right to trust your instincts. Something is wrong. It is only a matter of discovering what and why. If your instincts lead you to an answer, seek me out. Perhaps we will discuss more. Ah, without a home, another exile. Her people are not prone to violence, war, or hatred, yet their planet is obliterated, scoured from the face of the galaxy, and all that remains is a Sith. Because it was its time. Perhaps you should ask her. It begs many questions. This one you have saved has other masters. Though blind, she has ties to darkness. We shall see. I trust your exile has taught you restraint and discipline in the ways of the flesh. I hope your thoughts in this matter are clear. If you take her on as a servant, know that the Sith meet their end at the hands of their apprentices. It is not something I would wish to happen to you. Despite your urges, it would be better to deal with her now. Whether you intend salvation or slavery, she is a threat to us. She serves one of the greatest of the Sith. She is the most trusted and only apprentice. Yet you spare her. Why? We shall see. There may be value in such a choice to keep her alive, or perhaps not. Whatever your intentions toward her, keep them restrained. Whether mercy or lust, we have time for neither. Ah, so then perhaps I was mistaken in my judgment. It is good that you have never wondered what lay beneath her robes, if her alabaster skin was as white and unblemished as her face, or if perhaps she bore the scars of slavery, and if that would stir you more. 
if perhaps her deferent tone would change once you held her by the throat and showed her how far a Jedi can fall. Few are the thoughts that can hide in the shadows of your mind, exile, and such passions are not strength but erosion. No, then perhaps I was simply mistaken. See to it that you do not ever think such thoughts. Mating with her will bring more harm than you know. I cannot help but hear you at times, and such curious thoughts they are, not at all like a Jedi. See to it that you do not ever act upon your impulses. Mating with her will bring more harm than you know. Is that so? Well, perhaps there will be a second chance for her to inflict harm, so you may test such a statement. Lectures? I am merely making an observation. Whatever your intentions toward her, keep them restrained. We have no time for mercy. Despite your intentions, it would be better to deal with her now. Whether you intend salvation or slavery, she is a threat to us. This place is strong in the Force. Guard your feelings closely. They may betray you here. This place is strong in the Force. It is calming, a place where those at peace can gather their strength. This place is strong in the Force. It, it is difficult to center oneself here. Ah, you are here. You felt it. Did you not? The time to hide your presence is coming to a close, and you will need to increase your training. You are ready. Your training must increase, and there are higher mysteries you must learn. But only you must know the path you will take. I cannot choose it for you. Is it battle that stirs you? To meet an enemy blade upon blade? Such is the way of the greatest of Jedi warriors, the weapon masters. Or perhaps it is investigating the mysteries of the galaxy, seeking out injustice and harm, and bringing it into the light. Such is the way of the Jedi Watchmen in the time of Ulik Keldroma and Exar Kun. Or perhaps your way lies upon the ancient mysteries, and to teach others the ways of the Force, as I have, the way of the Jedi Masters. Very well. I shall wait. Return when you are ready. Is it battle that stirs you? To meet an enemy blade upon blade, such is the way of the greatest of the Sith marauders who seek strength in war and their rage. Or is it the ways of darkness and shadow that you seek, the power that comes from striking unseen and sensing weaknesses in others, the ways of the assassins of the Sith? Or perhaps your way lies with the Sith and the heart of their darkness, to recognize what strength is and bring that strength to those that follow you and those that defy you, the way of a Sith Lord. It is not some great test you require to be what you strive to be. It is only your decision to find that path that matters. From here on, you guide your destiny. But in order to take the next steps, you must face your past and put it to rest. And that is why I must leave you. You felt it, did you not? How many more do we intend to gather to us? This ship is not the galaxy. There is only so much room. Then prepare for an army, I think, for it seems many more will come in time. They will follow you because you are a leader. Their kind always needs such, even when the figure deserves no such obedience. No, perhaps not. Or perhaps you are different, something more. I am not blind. I see what they see, hear their voices when they speak to you, and notice the change when they speak to others. Do not cloak one word within another. <laughs> friends. Do friends not follow? Do friends not form a hierarchy of their own, no matter how small the circle? I am too old for friends, and when the years settle upon you, you will dispense with such words as well. Because I am not blind, that is why. I see what they see, hear their voices when they speak to you, and notice the change when they speak to others. I know many things, and I know what I am not. I am no leader. I speak with a voice that will never move others. I speak with a passion that goes unheard. They obey you because you are a leader, and perhaps something more. Have you noticed what has been happening? Have you felt it in them? They echo you, either fighting or surrendering to their feelings, their loyalty, their duty. Your mere presence serves as an example to them of something to uphold or something to fight against. The fool dances in your shadow for your favor. The woman, she worships you. The alien obeys you. Even within the machines, there are echoes. Watch them carefully. See their patterns and recognize the strength in it. Influence can be a weapon, one that you may need before your journey is done. 
I care not which of the words you use, as long as you make use of that which you forge. That was Revan's way, I believe. It was a strength. A discussion, perhaps, for another time. Have you never asked yourself how Revan took the Republic and Jedi beneath him, how he made them his? Ah, but to make officers turn on their own people, to bomb innocent worlds, to make pacts. Strong influence, indeed. And where did these Sith teachings come from? And why did Revan embrace them so strongly? So many questions, yet the answers are few. Oh, did they? No. Revan met no Sith Empire, yet he learned their teachings. Many have mistaken the soldiers beneath Revan, the machines that were constructed to be the Sith. They are wrong. The Sith is a belief, and what Revan formed was not an empire, but something else. Yet how he did it is curious. And I suspect the answer to that question is tied to another. How was Revan able to corrupt so many so quickly? Not a one. But we shall see where our journey takes us, I think, and see how many answers we come across, yes? Very well. Then we shall speak no more of this. Leave me, I am tired. Good. And then act upon it. It is a powerful tool to motivate others. I, I am but a mirror whose only purpose is to show you what your own eyes cannot yet see. The fool dances in your shadow for your favor. The disciple, he worships you quietly. The alien obeys you, even within the machines there are echoes. You deserve nothing, but you have earned such obedience, yes. They are tools, you are right, more than you know. Is it? Perhaps you are wrong. Have you done as I asked? Skill does not always draw from the force, but it is a measure of power nonetheless. It can grant knowledge, help steady oneself when one's thoughts are in chaos, or grant enlightenment. Much can be achieved without the Force, as you know. Life continues, persists, and may be helped or harmed as a result. You have seen what your weakest skill and your greatest skill can achieve. Reflect on this, and use them as tools as you explore the galaxy around you. Now I am tired. Leave me to my meditations. And as promised, I shall show you how it affects your strengths. Very well. Then know this. Your ability to perceive the environment around you extends not only to perceiving dangers, but the awareness of the motivations of others. As there are dangers in your environment all around you, there are similar dangers and threats lurking in the minds of others. To see these things sometimes is enough. That is a skill I know well. To know the knots of muscle, the currents of blood within the veins and flesh, it is a galaxy within the galaxy. The ability to heal is also the ability to harm, and the inability to heal what is damaged can also bring about harm. Go to the people of this vessel, practice what you have learned, and see what results. Very well. Then know this. Many are the times I meditate in the silence of my chambers. Do you know why I do this? I do this so that I might center myself, listen to the currents of the galaxy. There are others who may achieve this in occupying the mind, in achieving a moving meditation where operating on machinery achieves a similar effect. Go to the small droid. He is battered, damaged. Your skill with such things is weak, but choose a small part of his damaged frame and work upon it. There are others who center themselves by achieving a moving meditation, where operating on the minds of machines achieves a similar calm in one's own mind. Go to the small droid. Many of the behaviors within him are no doubt redundant and impair his smooth operation. Your skill with such things is weak, but choose a small part of his mechanical psyche and work upon it. Go now. Tell me what results. Very well. Then know this. All situations contain within them the potential for violence. To know how to hold that violence in check, to restrain it, and use it to hold the situation to your advantage is the way of any wielder of the force. Take a minor sonic charge and place it against the hyperdrive of this vessel. And then wait. Very well. Then know this. How some situations play out depend on who is perceiving them and whether they are being perceived. Your ability to control the perception of others in such situations will allow you to manipulate events to resolve them peacefully or violently. Hide. Walk softly and carefully through this vessel and watch it from stealth and you shall see what you shall see. The ability to persuade others is a powerful weapon, perhaps more so than any lightsaber. It is a strength to defeat an opponent without combat, 
to convince them that your will is right or just, or will simply benefit them in a way that they had not perceived. Examine their actions and the why of how they do them, and when you achieve such understanding, more truths may be revealed. There are many secrets that the Force may not unlock, for they are not things of life. To uncover such secrets can allow you to see events more clearly. It can grant you more weapons, more wealth, and allow you access to places and their secrets that can often turn the tide of a battle or change events. Within this vessel is a sealed container that puzzles me. Use your skills upon it and see what it contains. Then why are you here? Other questions, perhaps? Have you come for more training? When I spoke of sight before, there is a similar handicap that tends to occur among those strong in the force. They neglect their skills. Some believe they no longer need them. The greatest wielders of the force are those that maintain some grounding to the more physical realities of the universe. Some wielders of the force have mastered piloting, others the ability to fix and repair and build from simple moisture vaporators to more complex machines such as droids and vehicles. One's ability to understand the human body and its ailments, for example, can make your powers within the force more complete, more powerful, when you attempt to repair the cellular damage of another. And others have mastered the more subtle work of politics, persuasion. Do not doubt that a galaxy may be conquered with words, a republic overthrown, and an empire made. When such skills are honed, one's abilities with the force become that much stronger. My warning to you is this. Do not rely on your companions to compensate for your weaknesses in skill. There will be times they will not be there to help you when needed. What skill would you say is your greatest strength? And what skill would you say is your greatest weakness? Then my task before you is this. Take your greatest weakness, devote effort to it, strengthen it, and I will show you how to strengthen your greatest skill. As you learn and train and test yourself against the galaxy, all your skills have a chance to improve and grow as well. When you devote some of that training to your weakest skill, you will know. Then my task before you is this. Take your greatest weakness, devote effort to it, strengthen it, and I will show you how it shall strengthen your power in the Force. Very well. Return when you are, and I shall have more to impart. Very well. What is it that drives you? Before, you fought with me about small kindnesses. You were correct. From the slightest push, a decision, a chain of events may be set in motion. Even on a small microcosm as this ship, such echoes may be created. This is my challenge to you. Use small kindnesses, small cruelties, and listen for the echo in the force. Before, you asked about small cruelties. It was not enough to speak of it. A demonstration is in order. Very well. Sit with me. You have brushed the surface thoughts of another. It is a start. Calm yourself. This time, silence your own thoughts. Keep them still. Imagine the waters of the room of a thousand fountains, each stream suddenly falling silent and still. Imagine the ice of Telos, cold and smooth, as it gathers upon the plateau. Now, stretch out. Feel the ship around you. Strip away the metal and see the souls and minds of those that fill its corridors with more thoughts and dreams and worries than can fill the space of this ship. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear, for in fear lies death. And... If I up the Dubana gas levels in the carbine, that would be enough to punch a hole even in triple Durasteel. And we'll need weapons like that if the Republic discovers the camp on Duxon. How could the Jedi leave the Republic? Was it because of the Civil War? Is it possible that they... From the first movement flows the second. Strike. Repeat. Circle one's opponent. Repeat. Faster. Quicker. If Father had been faster. If only Father had been faster. If I was faster, I would no longer be the last of my sisters. But does Atrus love him? Jedi do not love. Does Atrus hate him? Jedi do not hate. This journey is harder than any she has sent me on. This place is so quiet. Nothing like Nar Shaddaa. I don't even know why I'm here. Hm. Wonder how much the bounty on the Jedi is now. Don't understand how that Jedi keeps in shape like he does. He's barely changed from the holorecords. He just seems to be naturally young. 
Don't understand how that Jedi keeps in shape like she does. She's barely changed from the holo records. She just seems to be naturally beautiful. Switch the face of the plus one minus one card. The totals are nine ten. Switch the face of the plus two minus two card. The total is eight eleven. Switch. Your command echoes still, General, and I obey, as I did at Malakor. Not now. Focus on my voice. Malakor. Now do you hear me? Truly hear me? You have taken the first steps on a much longer road, Exile. The droid cannot be read in such a way. As for the alien who served with you in the war, its thoughts are more difficult, requiring many translations in meaning. Often it is better to read their impulses and images than their spoken thoughts. That is why he is deaf to you. I have found his impulses are cold, like a dead weight. His thoughts are black. Indeed. It is strange that I did not. Perhaps. I would not put much weight on such things. Of course there was. It is because Atten was not playing Pazak, yet he counts cards in his head. At times he will list off engine sequences, memorize the hyperspace routes on the other side of the galaxy, count the ticking in the power couplings, even though they are fixed. At other times he will imagine certain base lusts, certain indignities. It may be Atten is far cleverer than he feigns to be, or perhaps he is simply a fool. Such is the case with primitive minds. It is of no matter. The droids cannot be read in such a way, nor the beast. He has little thoughts to speak of. Ah, I had wondered if... But your powers are strong indeed. There are places in the galaxy, strong in the force, light, dark. They are born in places teeming with life, and in places that are filled with death. Worlds whose surfaces are graveyards, whose screams echo through the force. It is possible for war, for men to give birth to such places, to leave wounds on the galaxy itself. What you heard was the echo of the past, and it travels still. The answer will come to you in time. It must, when there is nothing more that you may learn from me. When the ruins of your past have been cleared away and I am no more, then you shall know what it is. And if you do not, then the galaxy shall die, and all my hopes for you will have been for nothing. Of course you do not. It is the past, the sound no one wishes to hear within them. Of course, that is the nature of echoes. And when there is a wound in the force, it rarely leaves the life around it untouched. What you heard was the heartbeat of the past. Its echo travels still. That is something we will leave until we possess a lightsaber and a proper sparring partner. Very well. If you travel with us, blinded one, then you shall work for your passage on this vessel. Your lightsaber, give it to me. I shall die before it passes from my hands. Your lightsaber, give it to me. The crystal I took from the condensed mist, sunk. It is adequate. You are young, your energy for such things surpasses mine, and your skill is enough that you may teach him the basics of the weapon. There is much that he has forgotten. There is only so much I can teach him. That fact did not escape me. When he has a blade again, it matters to me that he knows its use. It may be some time, but he will need it. Now, try to kill her with the single blade. Use no other force technique, no items, merely the blade. Because you may not always have your right hand. Now, do it. This is no Ichani etiquette ritual. Do not ask her. Attack her. You have defeated her. Now, do it with two weapons, one in each hand. Again, no items, no force powers. Let us see what you can do when your hands and mind are divided. No force techniques other than weapon skill. Let it flow through you. Let the force fill the cracks in your spirit. Excellent. Now, divest yourself of your weapons. You, blinded one, you will keep yours. Let us see what you can do when you have no weapons left to you. Now, attack her. You have disobeyed me. I said no weapons. Now you will begin again. You have disobeyed me. Why? No, I did not. Why did you resort to them? It is enough. There is nothing more for me to teach you. You know as much of battle as I. You have fallen. Grab your weapons. You will fight until you have defeated her. The Sith will not allow you that choice. Now, deal with her, or you might as well die here, now. The Sith will give you no such chance. Now, deal with her, or you might as well die here, now. If you will not fight, then you will die. 
Imagine you're fighting the Sith. It will not be much of a reach with this one. Are you ready now to learn the higher mysteries? Every step on our journey shall bring with it discoveries. With persistence, you shall grow in the Force. And for every planet we reach, all that we touch with our presence, you shall grow, for you will have no choice. The Jedi Council was wrong, you know. Your bonding with others, it is not due to the Force. It is simply who you are. It is the human part of you. It touched me, and it has left its mark. I do not want to train you to be a Jedi Knight. I want you to learn to be a man. I do not want to train you to be a Jedi Knight. I want you to learn to be human. I want to train you what to be when you are not a Jedi Knight. You have grown strong in the Force. I can feel its mark upon you. Be warned. The highest of mysteries cannot be found by falling to the dark side. It is a quick path, and often a short one. But I sense a disquiet in you, an unrest. Such things will erode your strength. They sense the trappings of power and decision upon you. Their lives are static, trapped, and they see one who carries no such chains. Ah, then you have learnt nothing. It is only from such small things, from such critical points, that the universe and its masses may be moved. That is why you must indulge them and indulge yourself. It is not aiding them that matters, but using them as forges against which you temper yourself. Use their dependency, feed upon it, until you have exhausted them, then leave them. And I would view the ones you travel with much the same way. Ah, now you are learning. Do you know why those we meet display such weakness? As I said, their lives are static, untested. It is only through interaction, through decision and choice, through confrontation, physical or mental, that the force can grow within you. You have seen it. You have felt it within you as you have traveled with me. The growing anger, the rage, and the power it brings. Yet the power does not build without such struggle. Through small cruelties, greater ones are born. So you may think. But it will be best to strike first. Your allies are allies by circumstance, and they will not hesitate to do the same to you if you continue down your path. From such small things, from such critical points, the universe and its masses may be moved. That is why you must be careful in all that you do and in every choice you make. As I said, their lives are static, untested. It is only through interaction, through decision and choice, through confrontation, physical or mental, that the force can grow within you. You have seen it. You have felt it within you as you have traveled with me. The growing anger, the rage, and the power it brings. Yet the power does not build without such struggle. Through small cruelties, greater ones are born. These creatures are weaklings, unable to fend for themselves. You have grown strong in the force. I can feel its touch upon you. Do not let the higher mysteries blind you to others. Turning away from that which tempts you or causes you fear is not strength. Facing it is. I have seen you display many acts of mercy, charity in our journey. Why, even if it weakens those you help, even if it robs them of the strength needed to grow, you have been chased, hounded since our first meeting, and it has only made you stronger, more capable. No, you merely think you are. Now is not the time. Be patient. Then you have learned well. In this war there are no rules except your survival. If we are to win, then you must survive, no matter what the cost or who you must defeat. I have nothing more to teach you. If you will not fight, then there is nothing more that I can teach you. Seek a Jedi, do not waste my time. I have nothing to teach you. If you will not fight, then you cannot learn. Do not ask me again. There is something I must tell you about combat, about wielding a blade as you do. The Jedi practice many forms, many styles of lightsaber combat. It is good to know them, but not to rely on them. You may have already felt the Shicho, the simplest of the forms, return to you as your skill and perceptions have returned. Others may come with time, with experience. It is simple, and its simplicity is strength. It allows focus, a slightly improved chance of connecting with one's opponent. It has no other advantages or disadvantages. It is an effective form to fall back on when no other form will do. Ah, a technique that helps one resist the force attacks of an enemy and also is excellent in lightsaber combat. It does more damage, but it leaves you vulnerable to other attacks. Use it against others wielding the force or lightsabers, but not against anyone else. A defensive technique, but effective. Use it if you do not wish to be hit or if you are facing many opponents with blasters. 
With a lightsaber blade and enough skill in deflection, it is an excellent offense against blasters, but in other situations, it merely delays the inevitable. Ah, one of the techniques you've learned from the masters. This technique is good against a lone opponent, and you will find your critical strikes are more effective, but you will be vulnerable to almost everyone else you are fighting. An aggressive technique, but it is powerful, effective. It can counter blaster weapons and add to the damage of your critical. A blending of younger forms, and all of them in moderation. In the blending, much of the individuality is lost, but the strengths are spread evenly, and there is little weakness in it. Its great strength is the way it allows the force to flow through you, revitalizing one, even in the middle of combat. Perhaps one of the greatest styles, learned only by the most skilled of force wielders. Impressive. In many ways, some have described it as a surrender to the force and to chaos, to strike at an opponent with such speed and angles of attack that they have difficulty countering it. Your number of attacks will increase, and you will notice many more of them shall slip beneath an opponent's guard, critically wounding them. But in surrendering yourself to the force in such a way reduces your ability to resist its effects should the enemy turn the force against you. Be on your guard. You are ready. Very well, let us begin. Now use your form that grants you mastery over the force. Now use your form that grants you an affinity with the force. Now use your form that grants you potency with the force. Use the Shicho form. Make use of the Makashi form. Use the Sarisu style. Now use your form that allows you to focus the force. Attack using the Ataru form. Demonstrate the Sheen form as you attack. Now the Neiman form. And now for the last, the Juyo form. Now there is one last technique that I have to show you. It allows you to recover your strength with the force more quickly, and it lends strength to your force powers. It has no other drawbacks. Such a form is a gift, preferred of the Jedi Consulars, and effective in combats where you must fight only through the Force. It is a great technique that you have learned. Gifted only to the highest of Jedi Masters and the Sith, this technique makes your Force powers more difficult to resist, and they will last longer as well. But it can tire you quickly. Use it only in short combats where expediency is necessary. With this form... Your use of the force will have more damaging effects, but it will drain you as well. Effective, but only if conventional means are having no effect. Helpful, especially in tandem with other force techniques. This one opens you to the force, allowing you to recover your strength with the force rapidly in combat. There is nothing more that I can teach you now. Wait until you have grown in the force, and we shall see what more knowledge I can impart. What is left of the Jedi has felt what has happened. The death of Master Kavar. No. What is left of the Jedi? You will find what remains in the ruins of the Enclave on Dantuin. This matter has come full circle, and there is something there that you must hear if you are to understand. They will await you in the ruins of the Enclave on Dantuin. What is left of the Jedi has felt what has happened. The death of Zezkael. What is left of the Jedi has felt what has happened. The death of Master Vruk. What is left of the Jedi has felt what has happened. The death of the last of the Council. We must go to Dantuin, to the Enclave. There is something there that you must hear, if you are to understand. I have no time for questions, and any answers will have to wait until we stand within the Enclave together. Betrayal! Machines! His passion for such things defies me. There are countless reasons, and I have neither the time nor the patience to list them all. Do you think to turn her from Atrus's will? If so, I hope your arrogance will prove true in time. That I will abide her presence. She may have her uses. No, she may have her uses. I will abide her presence, and so should you. If that is your opinion, it is noted. Is that all you wish to speak to me about? Good. That is the most to be done until events unfold, as I am sure they will in time. Now is not the time to speak of this. Wait until you have more of the galaxy within you, and we shall speak again. I confess its nature eludes me as well, but the bond is strong, and its roots run deep. It seems that at times of stress and pain, if they catch us unawares, then the pain is transmitted between us. When battle is upon us, I suspect our minds are prepared enough to shield each other from the pain. I think we shall not have a repeat incident of what happened at Paragus. It seems the force flows easily between us. When one of us manipulates the force to heal or strengthen ourselves, the other is aided as well. A powerful technique indeed, though, as we have noticed, it has its drawbacks. Indeed. A Jedi tool and a Sith weapon. And why do you need such a thing? 
then listen to me. There is much weight, much craving attached to such a tiny thing of light. For the male, it seems to have an inordinate importance. But we shall leave such male preoccupations for philosophers and cultural historians. A lightsaber, any weapon, only achieves worth in how it is wielded, in the effort, in the struggle of one who holds it. Such a weapon does not make a Jedi or a Sith, and at times it makes them much, much less than they are. The knowledge has already been imparted to you. Upon our journey, the pieces shall fall into place. I suspect that you will learn the parts and the path to build it in time. But until then, focus on rebuilding yourself. Yes, of pain he has learned much. Of knowledge, of teaching, he knows nothing. Like the others, he was spawned by the horrors of the Mandalorian Wars. He exists solely to spread his pain to all Jedi everywhere. Even now she is difficult to see. She must remain hidden for now until the time is right. If not, then all our efforts will be for nothing. In this you must trust me. If she is exposed too soon, then this war will be over before it has begun. The less said of that one, the better. Even a stray thought may draw him, and it is possible that he cannot be defeated. He is one who has learned the greatest of the Sith teachings, and it enslaved him. Until you are ready, we must not seek him out. There are dark places in the galaxy where few tread, ancient centers of learning, of knowledge. But I did not walk alone to be united by hatred is a fragile alliance at best. But my will was not law. There were disagreements, ambition, and hunger for power. There are techniques within the Force against which there is no defense. I was cast down, stripped of my power, exiled. I suffered in dignities, and fell into darkness. I did not wish to kill you, so they cast me down, stripped me of my power, exiled me. He is overconfident. Observe how he handles his lightsaber. He is using Ataru, an aggressive form, best suited for single opponents. You can easily defeat him by encircling him with your companions or by using blaster fire. Be wary of his power attack, however, as it is further enhanced using this form. You have him on the defensive. He uses the sheen form. Study his movements carefully and try to emulate them. This form will be useful when you face multiple opponents or ranged attack. Sheen also allows you to make more devastating critical attacks. It would serve you well to assimilate the style this Jedi is demonstrating. It is called Neiman, and it is a very balanced form. Neiman offers none of the specific strengths of other forms, but neither does it have their weaknesses. Predictably, he seeks to unbalance you with his erratic attacks. His technique is called Juyo, the most chaotic of the lightsaber forms. This form sacrifices much to bolster offense, leaving one exposed to attack by the Force. He has made a grave error in assuming you lack the power to harm him with the Force. Note the strength of his Force powers. He is desperate to finish you quickly, so he uses a potent form of the Force. Defeat him by going on the defensive and absorbing his attacks with the Force. He will quickly run out of energy and then you can finish him easily. He is being typically cautious. He isn't sure of your strengths and weaknesses, so he is using a force form that grants him greater affinity to the force. This allows him to more quickly regenerate his energies. Don't be drawn into a long battle. Once you understand his technique, attack him aggressively while he dawdles. He may appear stronger in the force than you, but this is merely an illusion granted by a certain mastery of the force. The powers he uses against you will not directly harm you, but he seeks to weaken and confound you. Exploit the weakness of his form by using your own force powers against him. It is something the Sith, the assassins that stalk us, can do. It is of the dark side, the ability to feed on life, the force. The closer one comes to it, it makes them stronger for a time. 
Not all techniques in the force are learned through practice and training. This is something instinctual, born from experience. It is a way that they fill the hollow places where the force used to be. Our psychotic urge is all that drives you. I don't know what even came over me. One second we were just standing there talking and then... What happened? One moment we were speaking, rationally, and then I felt this rage. I am not speaking to you, alien. Be silent. The stance of our enemy was unthreatening, more surprised than anything. And then we... then I... I am not speaking to you, slave of Atris. Be silent. What happened? I... why did we just do that? That innocent... They meant us no harm. Never have I felt the rush of battle. So quick or sudden. I am not speaking to you, slave. Be silent. Why? What did we just do? We didn't... I am not speaking to you, girl. Be silent. Be silent, beast. I'm not talking to you. Statement. Oh, master, that was refreshing. Nothing like a spontaneous, impulsive extermination to make my behavior core glow. Silence, droid. I'm not speaking to you. I fail to see the economic benefits in such a termination. The cost in the long run. Did you have any reason behind what you did, or were you blinded by bloodlust? Silence, droid. I'm not speaking to you. I am not speaking to you, fool. Be silent. I would examine the situation as a whole, all of its ties to the Force, and then decide which string to pull, not sever them all at once. Such crude methods grant you nothing, perhaps, but not from those who matter. Oh, I grow weary of this. Perhaps time will allow my words to take root, if your common sense will not permit it. Perhaps. And perhaps in the future you will remember such a lesson. There are many paths in life, and some are short and empty. Did you have any reason behind what you did, or were you blinded by bloodlust? When one of us is committed to battle, then all of us are committed. We must stand together. Your brutality grows tiresome. Such displays are not the signs of true strength. Is your bloodlust finally satisfied? Well executed. You have created an echo, something that will travel for some time. You are learning much. Do not mistake my tone. I was not faulting your choice. Far from it, I respect it. There are many who never learned such strength. Very well. I shall keep such thoughts to myself. And what is it you think you have accomplished? If you seek to aid everyone that suffers in the galaxy, you will only weaken yourself and weaken them. It is the internal struggles, when fought and won on their own, that yield the strongest rewards. You stole that struggle from them, cheapened it. If you ever weakened yourself in such a way for me, I would rather suffer and die than have you demean yourself for me. That is not who you are, who you can become. Then you do not know yourself, and you will die a fool's death before you are ever tested. Then you have failed, and when you break, it will be because another does. And then the galaxy shall fall. Uh, hey, thanks. The Mandalorian Wars prove such things. In only one Jedi did I see valor. Her nature tells of such things to any who care to listen. His stance tells of such things. Oh, uh, hey, thanks. I fear that will be your undoing. Then your allies are your weakness, and if they die, you die with them. And because of that... Where once the Sith had but one target, now there are many, and you frustrate my attempts to protect you. Indeed, the currents of the galaxy, of nations, of peoples, may all stem from such small kindnesses. Every small weakness, small fracture that you create weakens the whole. If you care for others, then dispense with pity and sacrifice, and recognize the value in letting them fight their own battles. And when they triumph, they will be even stronger for the victory. That is all I ask. If you do not wish to hear it, then you will remain deaf to everything around you, and that shall be punishment enough. Ah, oh, I grow weary of this. Perhaps time will allow my words to take root if your common sense will not permit it. I believe he was speaking to Malik in that final battle, though few knew it. What stronger display than death for conveying one's sense of being betrayed by one's own student? Revan's anger must have been great indeed. 
to claim to know anything of Revan's choices or what lay in his heart when Malak fell is conceit, servant of Atris. And whether Revan had any choice in the matter at all is something else you should consider. The Force is a powerful thing to wield or deny. But to say that seems an untruth based on what I know of the Jedi. The Force can drive others, but there is still choice, is there not? Ah, but at what point does the power the Force exerts submerge any attempt at choice or free will? If there is no choice in the Force, then our teachings and our actions are for nothing, and I refuse to believe that is true. You have taken a complicated question, servant of Atris, and you have trivialized it with your answer and lack of experience. I have seen a few of them. Yes, they were not always in Atris's meditation chamber. There were many relics, among them small cubes, warm to the touch, each containing their own light. Jedi holocrons, yet warm to the touch, you said. Yes, and with a light about them, when held, some would speak, ask strange questions. Yes, their questions were confusing. They seemed to think I was someone else, someone's student. Ah, of course they did. A simple misunderstanding, no doubt. Well, if it isn't the one who stole the Ebonhawk. Not so smug now, are you, you little thief? Don't be a fool. Atris stole the ship and the droid, says you. Many are the times I meditate in the silence of my chambers. Do you know why I do this? I do this so that I might center myself, listen to the currents of the galaxy. There are others who may achieve this in occupying the mind, in achieving a moving meditation where operating on machinery achieves a similar effect. Bounty hunters in the exchange are going to want to shoot you, and someone who is willing to talk is willing to talk to anyone, which means trouble. The bounty is a waste of our efforts. All that matters is the Jedi. The intentions of the thugs of this moon are of no consequence. This bounty poses a threat to him. We do not need two beasts at our back when the Sith are enough. I agree. They are nothing more than a distraction. But even a distraction may prove fatal at a critical moment. We must protect him. I do not wish your support, Dark Jedi. Your words only undermine my arguments. If you are so certain of your path, then do what you will, servant of Atris. It makes no difference. The moon is a swarming cloak, a shadow of emotions. It is an effective shield, but if we come near the Jedi, I may be able to see him. You will not come near the Jedi. I will not allow it. You mistake my intentions. I care nothing for this Jedi. But if finding him will speed our journey, then I will aid you in your search. We do not need your assistance, Dark Jedi. Enough. This moon does not get any smaller while we debate. This sector is as good as any place to begin our search, so let us begin. All right, then, let's move out. Uh, where are we headed exactly? It does not matter where we go. If what we seek is here, we shall come upon it in due time. Uh, yeah, if you want to stay on the ship and meditate some more, don't let us stop you. Bounty hunters in the exchange are going to want to shoot you, and someone who is willing to talk is willing to talk to anyone, which means trouble. The bounty is a waste of our efforts. All that matters is the Jedi... The intentions of the thugs of this moon are of no consequence. This moon, it teems with life. It is difficult to center oneself. Finding a Jedi or anyone else touched by the Force here will be difficult. The mass of people, the rush of their emotions, it makes detection difficult. Your thoughts are disturbed. I can feel them like a shiver running through you. It is Nashada. The true Nashada that you feel around you. It is this moon, with the metal and machines stripped away and the currents of the force laid bare. I'm surprised you can feel it. I fear the damage to you had deadened you to such perceptions. What you feel is the echo of the minds of these creatures within the force. Their anger, their greed, their desperation. It is life. One might as well move the universe, but such manipulation is possible, yes. Not in the sense you understand it. The ability to fool the minds of others, to dominate them on a massive scale that you speak of, is not achieved best through raw power. One might as well heal the universe, but such manipulation is possible, yes. It requires that one be able to feel the critical point within the fractured mass and know how to strike it in such a way that the echoes travel to your intended destination. Have you learnt nothing? 
Healing is manipulation. And if you do not realize it yet, then you will discover that an act of healing depends largely on your perspective. Manipulation is done through propelling events or selected ones into motion. It is done through teaching, through example, and through conviction. And the greatest of victories are not manipulations at all, but simply awakening others to the truth of what you believe, of hearing it echoed around you in life. For as long as it lasts, like life, such waking moments within the force are rare, waiting for the right moment when the critical point is struck and the sound rises. Strange? Perhaps. Perhaps not. It is but the vibration of minds driven by life struggles. The struggle to feed, to take, to mate, to fight. It is the way of things. But let us be silent. Words and thoughts are distractions. Feel this moment for as long as it will last. Feel life as it is, with the crude matter stripped away. Feel the currents here on Narshadar, the ebb of life. Where one creature feels pain, it lashes out. I saw what you did to those exchange thugs, stranger. Can you spare a few credits, maybe help another refugee in need? Thank you, stranger. I won't forget your kindness. Why did you do such a thing? Such kindnesses will mean nothing. His path is set. Giving him what he has not earned is like pouring sand into his hands. And would that be a kindness? What if by surviving another day he brings a greater darkness upon another? The force binds all things. The slightest push, the smallest touch, sends echoes throughout life. Even an act of kindness may have more severe repercussions than you know or can see. By giving him something he has not earned, perhaps all you have helped him become is a target. Seeing another elevated often brings the eyes of others who suffer, and perhaps in the end all you have wrought is more pain. And that is my lesson to you. Be careful of charity and kindness, lest you do more harm with open hands than with a clenched fist. Good. Mind what I have said. Use your power, but in its proper place. Forgive me, stranger, but if, if you had some credits you could spare, it would, it would be a great help. Please. Forgive me, stranger, please. I beg you, do not kill me. Why did you do such a thing? Giving in to your feelings over such a small matter. They would be better served elsewhere. And what would you rather do? The force binds all things. The smallest push, the smallest touch, sends echoes throughout life. These acts of cruelty may have more severe repercussions than you know or can see. Cruelty leads to suffering. And when one suffers, it is the way of life to spread suffering. The suffering within builds until its sound is all one hears. And when a kindness is offered, it is punished and a greater darkness is served. From one act can come tremendous power when the echo has travelled as far as it can. Send a great echo, and power will come to you. The day shall come when you can test your strength, I promise you. Indeed, listen, feel the echo. Very well, but mind what I have said. Use your power, but in its proper place. I don't know why a Jedi would come here. There's so much noise on this moon. Of course. It makes detecting a Jedi difficult. But to be in a place where one drowns in the Force... Why would a Jedi wish that? A simple question, to which I ask another. Why should a Jedi want to hide? What's wrong? Why are you stopping? I've been right here hundreds of times. There's nothing special about it. No, I don't believe in the Force. It's Jedi tricks, sleight of hand. This I'd like to see. It's not going to hurt, is it? Feel the currents here on Nashada, the ebb of life. A simple kindness can be given to another. This is the Force, and all our choices... From the greatest to the smallest, affect each other, and the echoes travel. I can feel this planet. I can't shut it out. It's louder now, it hurts. All these people. But if, if I become a Jedi, I'll have to turn myself in for the credits. Are you going to train me? I want to become like you. I want to be strong. I don't want to be afraid or alone anymore. I don't want to keep running and looking and never feel like I'm finding what I'm looking for. I am tired of being hunted. When the galaxy takes something from me, I want the power to let go. And I want the power to heal the echo when it's gone. That sounds all right from where I'm standing. <laughs> all right. I think I'm ready to try then. I want to become like you. I want to be strong. I don't want to be afraid or alone anymore. I don't want to keep running and looking and never feel like I'm finding what I'm looking for. I'm tired of being hunted. I don't want to be 
lost anymore. When the galaxy or anyone takes something from me, I want the power to take it back. And hurt them. I'm ready. I shall not fail you. That's what I want. I'm sure of it more than anything. I've endured worse. I can deal with this. Can you train me to do what you do with the Force? Feel the currents here on Nar Shaddaa, the ebb of life. Where one creature feels pain, it lashes out. Well, good thing it's not a trap. What are you talking about? It's obviously a trap. Could you please lighten up for one second? It may be a trap, but traps work both ways. This viscous, his kind is spread through the lower reaches of Nar Shaddaa, and he may have information. But the choice is yours. If you go, you will have to go alone. It's strange you came by when you did. I was right at the edge of deciding whether to give up, turning it over in my mind. And suddenly you walked through the door and gave me the answer I needed to hear. I'll remember that. Thanks again, stranger. It would have been better had he found her on his own. By aiding him, you have only weakened him. He was at a moment of crisis, a moment of indecision. It is those internal struggles when they are fought and won that yield the strongest rewards. You took that battle from him, cheapened it. If he truly loved her, truly, he would have entered the refugee sector on his own. Damn the exchange, damn everything in his path, and taken her. You have made their union easier, not better. If you ever weakened yourself in such a way for me, I would rather suffer and die than have you demean yourself for me. That is not who you are, who you can become. Then you do not know yourself, and you will die a fool's death before you are ever tested. If you care for them... Then dispense with pity and sacrifice, and recognize the value in letting them fight their own battles. And when they triumph, they will be even stronger for the victory. Then you have failed, and when you break, it will be because another does, and then the galaxy shall fall. Then your allies are your weakness, and if they die, you die with them. And where once the Sith had but one target, now there are many, and you frustrate my attempts to protect you. I grow weary of this. Perhaps time will allow my words to take root, if your common sense will not permit it. It's strange you came by when you did. I was right at the edge of deciding whether to give up, turning it over in my mind, and suddenly you walked through the door and gave me the answer I needed to hear. I'll remember that. Thanks again, stranger. That was well executed. You used his own doubt to foster trust and reliance. Perhaps you're learning much in the flow of Nar Shaddaa. Do not mistake my tone. I was not faulting your choice. Far from it, I respect it. There are many who never learn such strength. Very well. I shall keep my thoughts to myself. You going to make a habit of busting into my room? And what sets you apart from the thugs that swarm on the carcass of this moon? Are psychotic urges all that drives you? I don't know what even came over me. One second we were just standing there, talking, and then... I'm not speaking to you, fool. Be silent. What happened? One moment we were speaking rationally. And then I felt this rage. I'm not speaking to you, alien. Be silent. The stance of our enemy was unthreatening. More surprised than anything. And then we... Then I... I'm not speaking to you, slave of Atris. Be silent. I would examine the situation as a whole, all of its ties to the Force, and then decided which string to pull, not sever them all at once. Such crude methods grant you nothing. Perhaps. But not from those who matter. Perhaps. And perhaps in the future you will remember such a lesson. There are many paths in life, and some are short and empty. Awaken, beast. I have saved your life, beast. That makes it mine. Kneel, because I need you to hunt, beast. This prey is something you have chased all your life. You are born and bred to it like no predator before you. No, that you shall not do. You will not bring harm to the exile, and if you do, beast, I shall break you. The screams of your tribe of primitives, the scene of lying, blinded with the huntress's blaster at your skull, I shall make it so that is all you hear and see for the rest of your days. Even your madness will not save you if you bring harm to the exile. Know this. Oh, the life debts of your people, the life debt you have twisted with your hate, I felt it within you. I shall promise you this, beast. Unlike the red-maned huntress, as long as you are loyal, I shall never show you mercy, no pity. But most of all, I promise you an end to your debt. Hunt her, pursue her, kill her, and ending her life will end your debt to me. The pain will pass. I was able to heal some of the wounds, but the rest must remain. You will need that pain when you travel, and it will give you strength for the hunt to come. I will tell you where you must go. If you survive that place, then she will come to you. But first, I must prepare you for what is to come. 
All it requires is that you immerse yourself in another lie. The exile, you shall be his servant until I call upon you. Do this thing, and I shall grant your desire. All it requires is that you immerse yourself in another lie, beast. The exile, you shall be her servant until I call upon you. Because there is something to be learned of strength, beast, even within your empty shell, and it will be needed in the times ahead. I have saved your life, beast, and all that comes with it. There may be a means to get to Onderon by another route. The Force has guided us here for a reason. We should explore our surroundings. There is... something here. Something? Oh, there's something here, all right. Predators. Not small flit darters, but big, mean, nasty predators. Nevertheless, we should explore our surroundings. And that nearby outpost would be as good a place as any to begin. Well, if you go, be careful. No telling what other ships were forced down in the battle. I have a feeling the ship will not be repaired until our business here is concluded. Do I make myself clear? Yeah, I understand. What's so important about this place? This is where the Mandalorian Wars began. She fought here once, and there are things here she must see. She fought here? Why didn't she say anything? Do you speak of all your battles? Or are there some you wish to forget? I agree. Going off alone is just asking for trouble, especially when there's no more reason for it other than a cryptic whim. No offense. If we hope to get to Onderon and leave this moon, then we need to explore this place. We landed here for a reason, I am certain of it. Looks like one of the moons of Onderon. Not sure which one. It's mostly jungle and mountain. I did pick up the remains of an old outpost near here. Maybe that's why there's all these clearings around. Maybe they were once settlements. There were no settlements here. Those clearings were most likely once craters or crash sites. Crash sites? This is Duxon, where the Mandalorians began their crusade against the Republic. The remains of whatever outposts you detected here are military ones. We should be careful. This is where the Mandalorian War started? This doesn't look like much of a battlefield. Much is buried here. And there is much that should remain buried. A moment. That beast there. Do you see it? The force flows even through these simple creatures. If you empty your mind, you may be able to feel its thoughts. They aren't fully formed. Basic instincts, primal urges, every breath dominated by the needs of the moment. The force is strong in such creatures, but their minds are weak. Pray for those able to hear their thoughts and influence them. Good. Beasts can be easier to affect than other sentients, but you must bridge the gap between what distinguishes us and them. You feel its thoughts, yes? Like a low rumble before the storm. Use the force to create a barrier around it, carefully and slowly. You came close, and you have the potential. With practice, you can make any animal passive and pliable, but the cage around their perceptions is a fragile thing, Many things can break its hold. Violence, especially with the Force, anything is possible. But that is the end of the lesson for now. All things in time. You may thank me by using what you have learned. Let us go. Wait a moment. Do you see that boma over there? The Force flows through even these simple creatures. If you empty your mind, you may be able to feel its thoughts. They aren't fully formed. Basic instincts, urges dominated by every breath and every moment, primal and unsophisticated. The point is to learn something about the Force. Even if you cannot appreciate that, you should value the power my teachings will provide you. Good. Beasts can be easier to affect than other sentients, but you must bridge the gap between what distinguishes us and them. You feel its consciousness, yes? like a low rumble before the storm. Use the force to create a barrier around it. Make it with care and subtlety. You came close, and you have potential. With practice, you can make any animal passive and pliable. But the cage around their perceptions is a fragile thing. Many things can break its hold, violence especially. With the force, anything is possible. That is the end of the lesson for now. All things in time. The Force is subtle and more powerful than people imagine. Keep an open mind. Stop. That is not the skeletal remnant of a war long past. 
That is a recent kill. It appears that Duxon isn't as abandoned as we would be led to believe. I cannot say for certain. What I do know is our path came here for a reason, but let us press forward. You may find the answers you seek. The past has a curious attraction to us all. Perhaps he came in a small shuttle to revisit old battlegrounds. Perhaps not. A few days, a standard week at most. The jungle has not left its mark on his armor yet. You probably have more questions. We have orders to escort you to our camp. Our leader wants to speak to you. This may prove of use to us. Let us hear his words and see if they hold any value. The balance of forces seem to favor Queen Talia. The royal palace is heavily fortified and defensible, and most of the soldiers are loyal to her. But Vaklu has new allies, Sith soldiers and their masters. The war has also driven the caged beasts in the streets mad. Braylor and I both concur. She doesn't stand a chance. You underestimate the Force, Mandalorian. I sense that we may still get to Master Kavar in time. I sense there is something stirring on the moon itself. Tell me, have your senses picked up anything from Duxon? Yes. Yes, we have. How? We picked up some transmissions from nearby in the jungle. Zuka's satellite relay has also picked up several shuttle launches with old Sith transmitter IDs. Some sort of staging base, perhaps. The Sith forces must be stopped. Otherwise, the Mandalorian is right. Master Kavar and Queen Talia won't survive this day. We only have our shuttle sensors, so we know nothing more than that. Those transmissions are the enemy. They are linked to the fate of Onderon. They must be stopped. Otherwise, the Mandalorian is right. Master Kavar and Queen Talia won't survive this day. Dividing our forces at a time like this is foolhardy. And this is why a common soldier will never triumph against a Jedi. Your military tactics are nothing compared to the Force. It is essential and inevitable that we face both enemies at the same time. One, two, three. Mandalorians, we've got company. Stealth targets have breached our perimeter. Wait a moment. I sense there is a disturbance in the camp. Our enemy has tracked us here. I did not expect them so soon. How did they get here, I wonder? Regardless, we must eliminate them all. None of them can escape. Our whereabouts must remain a secret. Let us join the battle. Our allies will need our help. How are the port stabilizers? They check out Mandalore. All systems are green. Good. I want the shuttle bound for Onderon within the hour. Is all in readiness? <laughs> it is. Like I promised. Why? You want to back out now? My only concerns are for the one you escort to Onderon, Mandalorian. Would you do any less for one of your clan? Don't pretend to understand us. We Mandalorians are a breed apart. If by apart you mean scattered, broken, and lost, then yes, you are correct. Not for long. Soon the Mandalorians will be strong again, united as one clan under one banner. Mine. Ah, yes. The Great Crusade. After the first one was ended by Revan and the Jedi, such a defeat was merciful, an echo of the end, when your ships were in flames, crushed in the grip of Malachor V. But I do not need to remind you of such things. I was at Malachor V, and I remember how many Jedi died to stop us there. And no matter how many dead orbit that planet, the Mandalorians still live. Clan Ordo still lives. See Kex there? He was serving on Nar Shaddai's muscle for the huts. Kelborn was a scout for the Duros on Frontier Worlds. I brought them here, gave them a purpose. This galaxy will be ours again, I promise you. That is the future. Indeed. The future is always in motion. It is a difficult thing to see. Perhaps there will be no New Age Mandalore, no great Mandalorian crusade. Perhaps your people fought their last battle at Malachor V and you have been dying ever since, a quiet death that will last centuries. And perhaps all that remains will be what I see before me, a man wounded by a Jedi, encased in a Mandalorian shell, hunted by the thought of being the last of the Mandalorians. You've got some guts talking to me like that. You think your age or your Jedi whelp are going to keep you safe from me? No, Mandalore, you are wrong. I hope that it is you who will keep the one I travel with safe. You are loyal, and you have served many masters, even following them into darkness. No, Mandalore, you are wrong. I hope that it is you who will keep the one I travel with safe. You are loyal, and you have served many masters, even when they abandoned you. Do you wonder where she wanders now, Mandalore? 
why she cast you down, left you broken at the edge of the galaxy. Do you wonder where she wanders now, Mandalore? Why she gave you your orders, then abandoned you at the edge of the galaxy? How do you know that? I know many things, and I can answer the question that burns within your shell, Mandalore. But there is a price. You must keep the one I travel with safe. He is important to me, more important than anything. Show the same loyalty you have shown in the past, Mandalore. If there is a Mandalorian crusade, let it be for something that will carry your people's memory into the future. So when the time comes when there are no more Mandalorians, then at least their honor will remain. The one I travel with has walked your same path. And I ask that when the end comes, that you remember that kinship, even if it seems there is nothing else left. We must quickly get through that door. There are Sith behind it, and they are using the energy of this place to their own twisted ends. For what, I cannot say, but you shouldn't waste any more time. Freedom Nad's power appears to have been underestimated. His legacy lives inside the very stones of his resting place. Anyone attuned to the dark side will have a tremendous advantage here. Proceed cautiously. Freedom Nad was a dark Jedi. The stories say he was far worse than Revan and Malak ever were. This place is tainted. And the Sith presence here makes the danger great. The soldier is correct. The dark side is strong here, and it will grant its strength to the Sith. My flying mount you see here. Once, they preyed on the people of Onderon, but through years of living in the wilderness, we have learned to tame them. They have been kept in their cages for a long time, but yet at times I feel as if something else is affecting them frightening them. Beasts can be sensitive to the currents within cities and people. When such things are disturbed, the beasts may echo it. Halt, off-worlder. You'll have to answer some questions before you go into the city. What is your business on Isis? I don't think your business is any concern of mine. Minds are often weakened when forced to follow familiar patterns, but sometimes those patterns work against you when backed by loyalty or duty. Use your power carefully. A debatable point, but what is done is done. I see. The Force is powerful, but overestimating its utility is dangerous. I... I will let you... No. No, you're not permitted past this point. Loyalty can prove an effective wall to your talents, but there may be a way to undermine it if one looks for it. Whatever course you wish to take, aiding this woman may be useful. We may gain Vaklu's favor or learn more of his plans. Either way, helping Under should be carefully considered. Holding vendettas is a weakness. An open mind can unlock many doors. General Vaklu may be at odds with us now, but it need not always be that way. We should conserve our strength for more important matters. For the sake of subtlety, I suggest we avoid using grenades and any other weapons that may injure civilians in this battle. Many Jedi have fought on this world. One of them lost their lightsaber in the Beast Wars. A reliable source says it's a rare Quixoni crystal. Incredibly rare and valuable. Quixoni crystals are from an earlier age. Some of the first Jedi found them on a planet whose sun was dying. At the time, they were matchless in power. The star went nova millennia ago. They are as rare and as valuable as she suggests. You've won this battle, Talia. But your reign won't be an easy one. The Republic is a sinking ship... And you're too attached to it. He's too dangerous to leave alive. As distasteful as it is, it might be best to silence him forever. Until he's dead, all of Onderon is in peril. Ah, oh, the wound is not a mortal one, though it has been some time since I exercised my healing powers. There is a shred of life within you still. A gift from your master, no doubt. Awaken, Colonel Tobin. Your part in this is not over. Colonel Tobin, I am with Vaklu. The war has gone against him. He sent me to rescue you, to tell you you must make haste off-planet. The Jedi have struck. They had a secret academy buried on Telos, and they are showing themselves at last. We are all in danger. What? But the Jedi are gone. They have all but vanished. So we all thought. But they have hidden themselves on Telos. Out of my way, old woman. This war can still be won, and Onderon can be freed. Indeed. This war is far from over. We've hit the ground. This is Korriban. An adequate job, pilot. Perhaps here there is some trace of those who pursue us. I sense that we may be truly alone on the surface. There are signs of life on the surface. Beasts by the dozen. 
So don't worry, you won't be quite as lonesome as she makes out. You might want to keep your, uh, lightsaber sharp, or do whatever you do in these situations. You should go to the ruins of the old academy. If there are any traces here of Sith, that is where they would be. After the Jedi Civil War, it took a year or two for the Republic to send a force here to deal with any Sith that may have remained. They found Korriban much as we have, barren and lifeless, and no Sith at all. I will try. It's difficult to say. The dark side shrouds its secrets well. Piercing it is beyond my abilities. Although I think that the pilot's mechanical devices are probably accurate. If there are Sith here, their numbers are few and they are hidden. As lifeless as it seems, the dark side is very strong here. The Sith lords would not ignore such a powerful place. There is much that can be learned, even here. The Academy is on the other side of this valley. We've hit the ground. This is Korriban. Why would one of the Jedi you're looking for come here? There is much that would draw a Jedi to this place. The resting grounds of the ancient and more recently departed Sith contain many teachings believed lost. It took a year or two for the Republic to send a force here to deal with any Sith that may have remained. They found Korriban much as we have, barren and lifeless. It was assumed that the remnants of the Sith turned on each other, vying for what little power remained. As lifeless as it seems, the dark side is very strong here. The Sith lords would not ignore such a powerful place. There is much that can be learned, even here. The Academy is on the other side of this valley. Be careful. The most likely place to find our lost Jedi is the ruins of the old Academy. After Malak and his army were defeated, instead of restoring order to Korriban, Revan suddenly departed, leaving both his destination and reasons for leaving a mystery. The Republic found evidence that several Sith lords escaped Korriban, fleeing to remote sections of the galaxy. It was said that Revan intended to return to Korriban to subdue any potential Sith insurgents, but Revan disappeared. If you walk Korriban's surface, you shall walk it without me. I cannot. This place is strong with the dark side. It is difficult to center myself here. Korriban holds few secrets from me, but much that you should learn. Perhaps not. But I would caution you to guard your feelings carefully here. Korriban attacks the spirit and the body, and there have been few who can fight its power. I will remain here and meditate. Our link remains. I shall contact you and provide guidance when needed. Dark energy fills these ruins, and even the fallen Sith live still. Judging by the chewed skeletons here, the Tukata turned on their masters. We can expect more than these beasts within the Academy. Be prepared. There is great power and dark energy within this cave. I would advise you to finish your explorations within the Academy before venturing into the cave. You are not yet strong enough to face what lies within this cave. We should return here when you are more powerful. The structures you see around you are the plundered tombs of the ancient Sith Lords. Each tomb was once infused with the history and heritage of the old Sith Empire, containing great mysteries and powerful relics of the Force. However, even the many traps could not long hold back the curious, the fools, and the weak. And so these tombs fell, spilling their secrets into the hands of those unable to comprehend or preserve them. Before you is the tomb of the great Sith Lord, Marka Ragnos, a half-breed who possessed tremendous strength, both physically and in the Force. Ragnos held power for over a century, using his cunning to turn his enemies against each other. His death left a great vacuum of power. We're standing close to the spot where Naga Sadao first confronted Ludo Kresh to vie for domination of the Sith. Their struggle nearly resulted in a civil war that would have torn the Sith apart before they ever threatened the Republic. Yes, it is the way of the Sith. They must continually test their strength against each other, even if it means destroying themselves. As fate would have it, a pair of hyperspace explorers from Sinagar landed on Korriban. Naga Sadao manipulated the Sith into believing they were a sign of impending Republic invasion. 
This fear resonated with many Sith who were discontent with the lack of expansion of the Sith Empire during the reign of Marka Ragnos. Thus, Naga Sadao became Ragnos's successor. Ah, the arrogance and ignorance of youth. There will come a day when you'll wish you'd learned from mistakes in the past. This way leads to the tomb of Ajanta Paul, a fierce Sith Lord. According to legend, the blade proved more fearsome than the master, leading to his demise. Ajanta's dark specter lived on through the centuries until Revan entered the Sith Lord's tomb in search of the blade. Revan sent Ajanta Paul's spirit into oblivion and claimed the blade for himself. Unknown. Some have suggested that the blade led to Revan's demise, as it did Ajanta Paul. That is only speculation, however. Where Revan wanders now is knowledge that only Revan holds. Unknown. Some have suggested that the blade led Revan to his demise, as it did Ajanta Paul. Revan calmed the angry ghost of Ajanta Paul and showed him the path back to the light. One who has fallen so far and done so much evil does not deserve redemption. In a way, such a turning from one's nature is cowardly, a betrayal of the self. Perhaps, but redemption is a form of spiritual collapse, a fall few recover from. Ahead lies the tomb of Nagasadao, successor to Marka Ragnos, and the Sith Lord responsible for nearly conquering the Republic in the Great Hyperspace War a millennia ago. More recently, this tomb was where Revan confronted Uthar Vin, the leader of the Sith Academy. When Revan left Korriban, the Sith Academy was thrown into turmoil. With their leader gone, many fought for the right to rule. And so, the Sith here turned on each other resulting in the carnage you can see covering the surface of this valley. This was the tomb of Tulak Horde, known as the greatest lightsaber duelist of the Sith Lords. His skill was considered remarkable even in his time, when many true lightsaber masters lived. If you were to face an ancient Sith Lord in combat, you would learn that we are as children playing with toys compared to the prowess of the old masters. That is unknown, but supposedly he created a holocron to teach his technique to other Sith. The holocron would have been laid to rest in his tomb. Unfortunately, Tulak Horde's tomb was among the first penetrated by the grave robbers of the new Sith Order. If the holocron has survived, I doubt anyone living would know its location. Here, you can just barely see the Sith archaeologists' efforts to uncover relics of the ancients. The new Sith Order sought to progress quickly by finding objects of power. I can only imagine what was lost forever due to the carelessness of these excavators. Now the excavation has been almost completely undone by five years of wind and sand. So does Korriban protect its secrets. The broken corpses before you are all that remain of the Sith on Korriban. I doubt there is much to be gained from looting these bodies. It would be best to leave them be. Fool! You've disturbed the spirits of this place, and they have sent their guardians. Hisses are semi-intelligent beasts, corrupted and strengthened by prolonged exposure to the dark side. As creatures of the Force, they have a limited ability to mask their presence. Hisses are drawn to suffering and carnage. They must have fed on all the corpses left over from the war here on Korriban. The angry phantoms of the Sith, too weak to influence the sentient, have taken these hisses as thralls to their will. <laughs> hisses are enough to humble even an arrogant one such as you. Test yourself if you must, but try not to die. Sion. He cannot be defeated. He is not a beast of flesh and blood. This is not a battle that can be won. Flee. There will be another time, but it is not now, not here, while Korriban runs through him. As I said, the dark side is very strong here. It tests you, it tests us all. If you fail that test, there may be more tests to come. Be on your guard. The power I felt coming through the cave is just ahead. 
Are you ready to enter the tomb? I believe you are strong enough to explore the tomb ahead. You will have to face the challenges of this tomb alone. Are you ready? This tomb has not been plundered. Its mysteries may still be intact, but so might its traps. Take great caution. You've succeeded in this trial. I am impressed. The dangers you faced in this tomb were real, but these images of the past serve to prepare you for your future. Surely you have felt what awaits. Events are shaping themselves about you, seeking to draw you into their center. Take care not to give in to vanity and arrogance. This breeds complacency and stagnation, as exhibited by the Jedi Council. Their prolonged inaction led inevitably to their downfall. The galaxy will bend itself only to those of strength and conviction. You overestimate the power of the tomb. Any change you feel is coming from within yourself. Instinctually you know your true path. Trust in your feelings. They will lead you in conquering the many challenges that the future holds for you. Sometimes a momentary insight is worth lifetimes of experience. You may not yet understand what you learned here. That wisdom will come in the future. We have been linked together in this manner for a reason. The dangers you faced here should have illuminated your need for fellowship. Search the room you are in. You should be able to unlock a passage that leads outside the tomb. You are to be commended for making it this far. You've revisited the dark moments of your past and now you must face the present. Your confusion is natural. The others and I will help you understand. Get away from her! She's a dark Jedi. Atten, I've had enough of your snide contempt. I will protect myself from this foul-mouthed ruffian. No, I won't allow her to corrupt you. I will protect you, even from yourself. Hey, what's the commotion here? Stay out of this, Beodor. This is a personal dispute between Atten and myself. You're threatening Atten with a lightsaber, and I'm supposed to just stay out of it? No. The three of you would challenge me? You sorely underestimate the power of the Force. Think again, Kreia. Your dark influence will end. Your friends are all arrayed against me. Will you stand for this? I will be honest with you. I have fallen to the dark side. Does this change your decision? You, of all people, would judge me so. Am I not worthy of redemption? So you will do nothing? Apathy is death. Worse than death. Because at least a rotting corpse feeds the beasts and insects. Apathy! is death. Apathy 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 is death. Statement. Apathy is death. Apathy is death. Apathy is death. Apathy is death. Well maneuvered. With both the mercenaries and the militia counting on your aid, you can influence the outcome of the situation as you see fit. Men, I trust you can handle this Jedi. You could have guided this situation to a better outcome. This could have been handled with much more subtlety. The Jedi Enclave on Dantooine was one of the major academies for young Padawans and apprentices. Many Jedi lived here once or twice. Salvagers are stripping it of anything valuable. Mostly they're collecting trash the Jedi left behind. The Enclave was bombed during the war, so there's not much left. Those artifacts have tremendous value and could be dangerous in the wrong hands, this is something we should investigate. Very good. You can always have your way with the weak-minded by catering to their ego. Hey, did that droid just call you a Jedi? You should keep your identity secret for the time being. Try to convince this fool you are not a Jedi. You should have listened to me. Now we may have to confront villagers with torches and pitchforks. And this sacrifice was for people like you. The Jedi kept on sacrificing themselves almost to the last for your survival. This is something you should respect. That crystal is bonded to you. Through you, it acquires its character and strength. And through it, your power is enhanced. Most interesting. Your crystal does not perfectly reflect your current self. Remove it from your lightsaber, then ask me about it again. Let me focus on the crystal for a moment. There, now it is fully in tune with you again. Should your power increase or your resolve change, speak to me again about this matter, and I will help you refocus your crystal. Force-sensitive locations such as this absorb and reflect force energy. The crystals are the catalyst here. I sense that Revan once passed through here. 
leaving a strong impression behind in the crystals. Perhaps future Jedi who visit this cave will feel our presence, as if seeing our footprints preserved in the soil. The crystals here are infused with the Force. Some could be harvested and used for lightsabers. The crystals here do not drain Force energy from Jedi. They collect the excess energy that radiates from those attuned to the Force. That can hardly be avoided. Even mundane actions of the basest creatures can create detectable ripples in the Force. A Minoc beating its wings on the plains could cause a sandstorm in the desert. And, figuratively speaking, Jedi have much bigger wings. That would create quite a large impression of yourself, and the crystals would eventually grow back. The crystal responds to you. This is very rare indeed. The crystal's bond with you is such that the stronger you become in the Force, the more powerful your crystal will grow. This crystal will make an excellent focus for a lightsaber. Quite the contrary. Picture yourself as a sieve, and the Force as water pouring into you. This crystal draws from the excess water that escapes the sieve. The crystal is in tune with you. It will use whatever water that pours through you, be it dark or light. You scoff at this gift, but many Jedi would greatly covet such a treasure. No, the crystal has bonded to you. Another Jedi would have little use for it. Do you feel it? The wound on this world, it is centered here. If we succeed in gathering the Jedi, they will come to this place. And if those Jedi are slain, then all that remains of the Order shall be drawn here as well. We will know when the time comes, and I hope our enemies do not. This is not wise. Indiscriminate violence will gain you little. It... it is different. It has been some time. Forgive me, but I need to rest. Go on. The Council awaits. I will remain here. Yes... Afraid for you, as I always have been, I will be fine here. Whatever answers the Council have are for you alone. I am tired. The journey has been a long one, and I need to center myself. Know that much may happen here, but above all, do not forget this. You may trust in me. We cradle each other's lives, and what threatens one of us threatens us both. And if you find you cannot trust me, trust in your training, trust in yourself. Never doubt what you have done. All your decisions have brought you to this point, and now, perhaps... They shall see what you have become. It has been some time. The years have not been kind to us both, it seems. But perhaps now they will see the truth at last. Is it as you expected? Yes, and that is why this place is empty. You are correct. Time is something that neither of us has. But for now, we must speak. Your actions have crippled the Order. Perhaps destroyed them. No. Perhaps... It is difficult to say. For every Jedi slain, for every Sith slain, another rises. But the Order is wounded, yes. Oh, yes. Your hate has destroyed them. You should be proud of the blood you have spilled, the lives you have ended. But before enjoying this victory, there is something we must discuss first. The destruction of the Order, the Masters, it was not an end in itself. I did not expect them to still live. Their presence was knowledge I did not possess. But now this has been corrected, and now the sides of this conflict are as I had thought them to be. There are no more unknowns, and what you have done, it is not enough. Although I did not expect them to still live, I had hoped you would learn something from the Jedi Masters as they fell before you, not just of battle, but of yourself. And the Force. I must know. If killing them, if revenge brought you any measure of satisfaction, 
if seeing them dead has settled the disquiet within you. Did I wish to see them dead? No. Defeated, perhaps. I merely wished them to see that they and their teachings were wrong, that one could not truly understand the Force simply by adhering to the Jedi Code. All I have ever trained have been failures to them. Students who went to fight the Mandalorians, who fell to the dark side, who abandoned their training. To see one that had the strength to best them, that is a moment I will not forget. Yet it has not been as satisfying as I had hoped. To best one in battle is one thing. To defeat them without striking a blow, that was my hope. Regardless, it had to be done. To have such powerful Jedi still live still be felt in the Force, even on such worlds as they had chosen, was a threat that had to be ended. That is not important. First, let us return to my question. If, by killing these Jedi, if you achieved any measure of peace, it is important to me, and I wish an answer, not more questions from you. It is important to me. It was as I thought. You have failed me. Completely. And utterly, I have taught you to hear the Force again, shown you the contrast, and yet still you do not understand. This is what you have wrought. Countless murderers, slayers, assassins, born of war that has, as always, taught the wrong lesson. You showed them life without the Force, and instead of showing them truth, power, all you showed them was how the galaxy may die. You are responsible for all of this. Even now, events spiral towards destruction, and there is nothing that can be done because you refuse to listen, to understand. You have seen the effects you have on those close to you, heard the echoes scream across dead planets, and watched as your strength has grown. Yet it is for nothing to have the Jedi Masters brought low by such a failure. There is no victory in that. You have not heard a thing I have taught, and for all I have said you have never learned to listen. Vrook was right to come here, though he did not recognize the connection until too late. This place will hide you from the Sith for a time, enough to do what must be done. You were my last hope, the only one who could change what is to come, and now you have left me nothing. I shall teach you no longer. Our bond remains, but that is all. Stay here and die, apprentice, among the wreckage of all that remains of the Jedi. It is a fitting grave until the Sith come to end you, to end everything. And as you lie here, I pray you will listen and finally awaken. Vrook was right to come here, though he did not recognize the connection until too late. All life is connected by the Force. You have felt it in your companions. Your choices affecting theirs, their actions mirroring yours. Imagine such incidents spreading outwards. From the smallest of actions, the smallest of cruelties and kindnesses, great tragedies are made. The wounds inside people, the wounds suffered by planets, both cause echoes heard and felt through the Force. And these echoes build, and all that can hear them shall become deafened or die. Choose the right moment. Create the right echo. And then all shall be destroyed. And there are those that feed on such deaths. And when no life is left, they shall consume themselves. You have taught them to bond with others and then feed on others through that bond. What you have brought is the death of all who can feel the Force. It is your gift to the galaxy, Exile. And unless you hear it and silence the echo you have caused, then every living thing everywhere that is touched by the Force will die. Listen, awaken, or die. I can teach you no longer. The bond between our lives remain, but that is all. It is my last lesson to you. I can teach you no longer. 
I have cut my bond to you. I have no need of it any longer. You were my last hope, the only one who could avert the disaster that comes, and now you have left me nothing. <gasps> there. Do you feel that exile? It cuts through your defenses, as unprepared for such an attack as you are. Let that pain be a lesson and a reminder of what you have forgotten. Pain travels both ways along connections in the Force. It casts echoes always, and one can learn to draw strength from such connections and take it from others. It is a lesson you know well, and you have taught to others at the end of the Mandalorian Wars. Let us return to my question. If by killing these Jedi, if you achieved any measure of peace, to the Sith? No, not to the Sith. Perhaps not in the way you would think, but their presence in the Force held dangers. They may have been used to sustain the one that threatens us, because it matters to me, in a way that never mattered to the Jedi, to the Council when they cast you out. You must understand, I did not wish the Jedi dead. Defeated, perhaps. That is your wish, not mine. There is strength in defeating an enemy, not slaying them. But you have corrected that, and now the sides of this conflict are as I had thought them to be. There are no more unknowns. Because there is something we must discuss. Oh no, there is a purpose in such things. That is what we are here to discuss. Yes, and that is I, though I am not of them any longer. I had thought you were the last of the Jedi, as did the Sith. But there are more of them than you know. Is it as you expected? This is all that is left. An empty chamber and an echo of what once was. But this moment is all that really matters. It was never my wish that you find the Masters, only find yourself. I have done what I can to keep you from the Jedi and the Sith. But a critical moment approaches, and what you have done is not enough. Master Vrook, despite his faults, was right to come here. I had thought he might have recognized Dantooine for what it was, what had been done there. You are tied to places such as these, you know. Yes, but Master Vrook was unwilling to see what other masters may have seen, that the echo of Dantooine he felt was inside you as well. They admitted it as much in the council chamber after your trial, though they did not understand what it meant at first. They assumed it was a threat that they felt. From one perspective, they were correct. As much as you can form connections to others, such connections exist on a galactic scale as well. That echo he described is not solely tied to Dantooine. Other planets that have suffered such destruction cast echoes as well. Yes, Telos is another such world, one of many in an increasingly long chain. Ah, and now the question. Do you believe it? You commit to nothing? Very well. Only when you accept the two are tied, you to these dead planets, can the lesson begin. But if you will not believe me, perhaps you will at least listen. Let us start with the most basic principle of the Force. It connects all life. It is possible to hurt or sever those connections, to create places in the Force where it is difficult to center oneself, but that is the crudest form of manipulation. It is possible to affect those connections in other ways, by the slightest action. A seemingly minor choice, a small cruelty, always just enough to create an echo of just the right distance and effect to change the behavior of another. Such minor acts can eventually change the behavior of another to influence them. Those who travel with you, for example, surely you have noticed it in your companions. Your actions influence theirs. It may seem a minor thing, but it is not. It is the power upon which empires can be made. Even the smallest of acts, the smallest of echoes can have profound repercussions. The talent comes in recognizing them and knowing how to manipulate them. This is why the smallest of cruelties, the smallest of kindness, may seem insignificant, but they are not. They can build upon each other, and if timed correctly, can grow. But there are other perspectives to this technique. The stronger your connection to life, to the Force, the stronger these echoes can be made, and the stronger they are felt. When heard, 
Force sensitives instinctively seek out the source, are drawn to it to try and form a connection. And when the connection is formed, both become stronger and the influence between them grows. Your companions, many are touched by the force on some level, and in many ways they serve out of compulsion and because your connection influences them strongly. It was much like it was for you in the Mandalorian Wars, with many Jedi under your command. But this connection has other consequences. When the source is wounded, the one on which others draw strength, then they are wounded as well. What one feels, the other feels. And when others die, the scream travels back to the source. If they occur at the same time, or at the right time, these screams will build upon each other until it is the only sound you can hear and the deaths of many will cause the screams to build until their pain becomes yours, and you die as well. And that is why, during the Mandalorian Wars, you lost your connection to the Force. It was that final battle, the deaths of so many Jedi, that caused you to lose your connection. It caused the wound that you feel now. It caused pain in the Force, an emptiness, a wound that has yet to heal. You were wasted among the Jedi. Yes, you are correct. But let us take things one at a time. Let us move our perspective outwards. This pain I describe, the echo of these acts, is true of planets as well. Tremendous loss of life on a planetary scale can also cast echoes, create a scream, a wound in the force that can travel across the galaxy. It can be felt by force sensitives, and it can influence them whether they realize it or not. If enough of these echoes are allowed to build in the Force uncontrolled, the consequences could be disastrous. The connections of all life would be affected. As I have said, screams and their echoes can overlap, build in strength, and if timed correctly they will build on each other, the scream will grow, and anything that can hear this scream shall be deafened or killed with difficulty. And controlling it, well, I do not believe such a thing is possible once it has begun, but in order for this to work, all of them must be timed correctly, must be carefully orchestrated and controlled, from the greatest to the smallest of echoes, even the ones that come from a lone exile echoing across the galaxy. And when that exile forms connections to others as you do, the danger becomes apparent, the echo continues to grow, to travel. Yes, he is correct. You form such bonds easily. The why of it is not important now. All that is important is that you understand that your actions affect others strongly. Anyone can do such things, since life is connected by the Force. Sometimes the connections are faint, but in your case, they are very strong. You instinctively know how to manipulate such connections, to influence others. You have seen it mirrored in those who travel with you. When you act, you cast echoes. Your intent is mirrored in others. Your bond, in many ways, is predatory, an expression of dominance. It is your right. But when you are wounded, all those you are connected to are wounded. You give others strength to act, but it is also possible to draw upon the strength of others to increase your own. It is similar to drawing upon the Force, as Jedi do. But when it is touched by the power of the dark side, it is something else, something deadly. These Sith we face, they have learned how to do this. It is a technique that has been lost for some time, not seen in the day since the ancient Sith. They can use it to consume other Force sensitives, and at the highest pinnacle of power, use it to consume anything that lives. They draw upon the connections in the Force and devour it. That is why they are drawn to Jedi, why it is easy for them to find where they gather, because it is like the smell of blood to them and they can draw upon the Jedi's own strength to kill them. No, for the pinnacle of this teaching is self-destructive, for its hunger keeps building and building until it has devoured everything, including the student. The blind seer, her master has harnessed this technique, and he is rapidly approaching the height of its power. I fear he may even rival some of the ancient Sith. He is already more of a force than a living thing, a hole in the force that threatens to draw everything into it, and the teaching must die with him, or else all life will be placed in jeopardy. Yes, because when a Jedi is deprived of the force, he is only a thing of flesh and blood and easily slain. When you accept this, you must accept that this can occur on a larger scale. Yes, he is correct. You form such bonds easily, I am not certain why. 
All that is important is that you understand that your actions affect others strongly. If you see only blame in my words, then you have misunderstood me. Now you sound like a Jedi, disbelieving, scoffing. Yet you have seen the evidence of this all around you. Yes, in that he was correct. But like Vruk himself, that is incomplete in itself, and it only achieves meaning when part of a larger whole. But it does not end there. If it did, then perhaps the threat that we face would be more manageable. Yes, you are correct. Because I need to see if I have wasted my time with you. Answer me. Very well. When you accept the two are tied, then the final lessons can begin. Kavar was wasted as a soldier. He was correct. Yes, Telos is another such world, one of many in an increasingly long chain. Yes, you have listened well in our journeys. Not all the Jedi Masters could see such connections as deeply as they should. Master Vrook was unwilling to admit that the echo of Dantooine he felt was inside you as well. The record of your trial hints at such things. It tells of ignorance. Your entire journey has brought you to this place. But for every step you have taken, the destination may have been hard to see. But there is much we must discuss concerning you and your allies. Our journey has taught me much. And so here lies all that remain of the Jedi. It is a powerful thing you have achieved here. You have brought death again to Dantooine. Their lives still scream across the surface of that dead planet, and within you, to hear the Force over such pain. It is not possible. It was too much for any Jedi to endure, and it is a wonder that you did not die there when thousands perished, all those you had fought with and struggled with. You cut yourself off because you had to if you were to survive. You had hints of it in the war on Doxon. Malachor was simply the final blow. <sighs> you were deafened. At last. You could hear. You were broken. You were whole. You were blinded. And at last, you saw. Did you not go to join him? No. It is a battle he must face alone. But Atris, she has not come. Of course she has not. There is no battle here. It is for the Jedi alone. And now the exile shall see their blindness for himself. It is what we have fought against for centuries. You... Oh, yes, at last, you see. And what was Jedi is Sith, and what is Sith is Jedi. Kreia, how did you get here? There are ways known to me, and it was important that I be here for this moment when he meets with the Council. It is done. He is no more. Take me to Atris. She will have the strength to do what the Council cannot. I am one of the Sith, it is true. I must answer for my actions, and it is my wish that only Atris hear my answers. And so you wait, as a shadow. Yes, we are alike that way, blinded one. I would have thought you would walk with him amongst the Jedi, but that is not the way of the Sith, is it? Do not speak to me of the ways of the Sith. You, of all of us, have no conception of what it means to be Sith. I have watched you hunger and doubt and drown in fear, and I have borne it all silently. I have felt your lusts and your longing and that spark of hope and longed to crush it. You could have been strong. There is a core in you where light shall never touch. It is done. He is no more. Take me to your lord. He will have the strength to do what the council cannot. Our judgment before remains. Exile. You must leave. And you must leave without your tie to the Force. It is a punishment reserved for only a few, and only when necessary. But we have the power to cut you off from the Force, and it must be done. Forgive us, but it is necessary. Do not be afraid. You shall feel no pain, but this must be done. As long as you feel the Force, you are a danger to those around you. Enough! Step away from him. What? Step away! He has brought truth, and you condemn it? The arrogance! You will not harm him. You will not harm him ever again. I thought you had died in the Mandalorian Wars. Die? No. Became stronger. Yes. Is this your new master, Exile? If so, then you follow Revan's path. Her teachings will cause you to fall as surely as he did. We sought to lure the Sith out. And now they have come to us. She is difficult to see. 
She's like a shadow of the exile. As you would pass judgment on him, I have come to pass judgment on you all. Do you wish to feel the teachings born of the Mandalorian Wars? Of all wars, of all tragedies that scream across the galaxy? Let me show you, you, who have forever seen the galaxy through the Force. See it through the eyes of the exile. How could you ever hope to know the threat you face when you have never walked in the dark places of the galaxy, faced war and death on such a scale? If you had traveled far enough, rather than waiting for the echo to reach you, perhaps you would have seen it for what it was. There is a place in the galaxy where the dark side of the Force runs strong. It is something of the Sith, but it was fueled by war. It corrupts all that walks on its surface. Drowns them in the power of the dark side. It corrupts all life, and it feeds on death. Revan knew the power of such places, and the power in making them. They can be used to break the will of others, of Jedi, promising them power and turning them to the dark side. Did you never wonder how Revan corrupted so many of the Jedi, so much of the Republic, so quickly? The Mandalorian Wars were a series of massacres that masked another war, a war of conversion culminating in a final atrocity that no Jedi could walk away from, save one. And that is what I sought to understand. How one could turn away from such power, give up the Force, and still live. But I see what happened now. It is because you were afraid. It is because you had no choice. There are places in the galaxy where the dark side of the Force runs strong. Such places are born of war, of death, of suffering, and if unchecked, their power grows, scream building upon scream, until any who can hear succumb to it or die. It breaks the spirit beneath it, as all wars do. See it through the eyes of the exile, as I have. Endure what he has endured, and perhaps there is the faintest hope that you will hear what he has heard. Did you not hear its call on Dantooine Vrook, on its scarred surface, and in the minds of the settlers? I have endured your corruption of my other students. You shall not have this one. And you, Kavar, so close to the call of Duxan, tell me, did you not feel what poured from the moon, what had taken place there? And Zezkael, to hide upon Narshada, yet blind yourself to all that happens there, so close to understanding the Force, so close to giving it up. See it through the eyes of the exile, as I have. Endure what he has endured, and perhaps there is the faintest hope that you will hear what he has heard. The exile, he is dead. We have lost. It is over. No, now it begins. In hatred there is unity. Against a common foe, even enemies may stand side by side. Now they will turn on each other, and the betrayals will begin. They will feed on each other until only one remains. That which waits in the darkness will now show itself, and now the galaxy will begin to die. The exile, he is dead. We have lost. It is over. No. Now the true war begins. The Jedi is all that united my master and the others. Now they will turn on each other, and the betrayals will begin. They will feed on each other until only one remains. It is more than that. Your master will begin what he has foreseen and hungered for, blinded one. Now the galaxy will begin to die. We shall see what the exile has taught. If she kills her sisters, then the dark side will have its claim on her. Yet if she does not, then she will die. Such is sacrifice. He will come in time. When he does, we will not be here. His battle is at Telos. Ours awaits us elsewhere. What of Atris? It is of no consequence. What happens next is between her and the exile. Ah, a curious thing. What lies behind it? It is Atris's meditation chamber. It is where the Jedi relics are stored. You have done well. All is as I have foreseen. There must always be a Darth Traer. And if it will not be her... Then I must assume that role, and as always, bring about the betrayal of the Jedi and the Sith. I am not here, not in the flesh, not in your mind. These holocrons hold much of the Sith, and they hold much of my teachings from long ago. 
but you have much yet to learn. And great tests await you. The death of the past, the death of this false Jedi was only part of it. One of the Sith Lords has come to Telos. You know why he has come here, and if he is not stopped here now, then he shall lay waste to this planet. You must confront him. He is part of the past, and like this false Jedi, must be laid to rest. Only then shall you be ready for your final test. If not, then you shall die. You know where the final test lies. It is not here, not in the battle that will wage across the surface and skies of this dead planet. And know that if you do not come to me, if you run from this, then I shall sacrifice myself and end both our lives through the bond we share. You know where you must travel, and there I shall be waiting for you. And know that if you do not come to me, if you run from this, then I shall sacrifice myself and end both our lives. You know where the final test lies, you have always known, for you have always carried the screams and echoes of Malachor within you. It streams from you like blood. Such arrogance. Indeed, did you think I failed to recognize such, save your threats for someone not willing to die? You have no choice, apprentice. Save your questions. I am not here, not in the flesh, not in your mind. These holocrons hold much of the Sith, and they hold much of my teachings from long ago. Kill her. It is mercy. It has been some time. Why have you returned? Because now I understand why the exile did what he did. There is much to be done. You were a fool to return. I spared you once. I will not do so again. Spare me? Ah, yes. No, you simply did not learn the lesson I sought to teach, that your strength is as meaningless as the strength of my hand. Why have you returned? Because now I understand why the exile did what she did. When the exile enters Treos Academy, he will be faced with a choice. One path, assuming he survives, will allow him to save his friends, but he shall be the weaker for it. The other route will lead him directly to this place, through the ones that have hounded his steps from the beginning, and he shall have his vengeance. Show him every respect when he arrives in these halls, Lord Sion. This I command you. What is thy bidding, my master? You are to do nothing. When she arrives, bring her before me. She may not survive Malachor. She already has. But this time the cracks shall be driven deeper than they were so many years ago. Master, what will you do to her? So touching. Can it be you still have feelings within that shell? You know what I shall do. You, who wear my teachings so well. I will break her. She is a blank slate upon which my teachings may be written, as you well know. Leave me. Await the arrival of the exile. When she comes, bring her before me. If the exile has come here, then she has not come alone. Of course, apprentice. The huntress is with the exile. She has a special talent for finding that which should remain lost. It also makes her difficult for me to sense but not to a creature bred for such things. Shall I send the assassins for her? No, I have brought a beast to Malachor to deal with that one. If she survives, she will become stronger for it. We shall see if prey can become a predator. Her breaking shall be flesh and bone, or it shall be inside. We've come a long way, Kreia. Don't bother getting up. Ah, the Huntress. To come alone, you are braver than I thought. She is not alone. We stand with her. And with her. Stand all the Jedi. And now I come in saying something suitably heroic. Children with lightsabers, but not Jedi, I think. Come close. Let me look upon you and see what the exile's teaching has forged. An assassin, a slayer of her own kin, a blinded slave, and a fool. Which of you wishes to try yourselves against me? As you can see, I am unarmed. You, perhaps. Come, child. 
Where you walk, it is not far from battle, slaughter, and the blood of your sisters. Think. Think before you throw away your life for him. Think of everything you will lose by dying. Your lusts unfulfilled. A dance unfinished. A love requited. Think before you give it up so quickly. And you, blind one, you have hungered to strike me down ever since you saw the bond the exile and I share. Can you feel the force running through me, even past the veil, past your blooded eyes? You know you cannot win. The force runs strong within you, Treya. But in the howling of a storm, it is difficult to hear the whisper of the blade. You have forever been the blind one. You were given a gift few are ever given. And yet you let your gift of sight warp you, twist. You think your existence under your lord was torture, Miraluka? I will make you see. At last you have arrived. Is Malakor as you remember? You no doubt have many questions. I would be a poor teacher if I did not give you the answers you seek here now. Indeed. Perhaps it is merely your perceptions of me that have changed. It is strange that you believe Malakor has not. But it has always been timeless to you, this place, and words have always been inadequate for the horrors that took place here. More talk of machines and threats. If you would end Malakor, then do it. But it will not be a victory for you. And of course you must be willing to die, to kill us all, and your friends. You may hold Malakor in your grasp, but I hold the answers to your past and future in mine. Would you destroy us both before learning them? If so, then do it, for you have already failed me. I never destroyed Atris. She had destroyed herself. I merely stripped away the illusion and brought her truth. Her teachings could not be allowed to continue, and like Malachor, she was part of your past, unresolved. She needed to be something you could confront and defeat one last time. It was part of your training part of what was needed to make you complete. And there must always be a Darth Treyer. The galaxy needs its betrayers, especially in the times to come. She loved you, you know, as one loves a champion. You were all that she could not be. Yes, it is all that is left unsaid upon which tragedies are built. More echoes travelling through the Force, of course. Let us speak no more of such things. We shall let the dead lie as the dead lie upon Malachor. She loved you, you know. She almost followed you into the Mandalorian Wars, though it would have betrayed everything she believed. Yet in not following you was the true betrayal. And that is why she had to be turned half-circle to face herself and see what she had become. How does it feel to inspire such love? A love that breaks the spirits of others across the surface of Malakor. Oh, not to love is no crime, or so the Jedi believe. It is their code that kills life, their adherence to the will of the Force. It is said that the Force has a will. It has a destiny for us all. I wield it, but it uses us all, and that is abhorrent to me, because I hate the Force. I hate that it seems to have a will, that it would control us to achieve some measure of balance when countless lives are lost. But in you, I see the potential to see the Force die, to turn away from its will, and that is what pleases me. You are beautiful to me, exile. A dead spot in the Force, an emptiness in which its will might be denied. I use it as I would use a poison, and in the hopes of understanding it, I will learn the way to kill it. But perhaps these are the excuses of an old woman who has grown to rely on a thing she despises. Yes, always. From the moment you awoke, I have used you. I have used you so that you might become strong, stronger than I. I used your death to deceive the Sith, to make them believe they had won, so they would turn on each other. And I used you to make those who wounded me reveal themselves, so they could be killed by the Republic. I used you to keep the Lords of the Sith from condemning the galaxy to death with their power unchecked. I used you to lure them to Telos, where they could be at last fought and killed. I used you to reveal Atris's corruption, so that her teaching could be ended before it began. I used you to gather the Jedi so they could be destroyed, and I used you to make those who wounded me reveal themselves so they could be killed by the Republic. Perhaps you were expecting some surprise 
for me to reveal a secret that had eluded you, something that would change your perspective of events, shatter you to your core. There is no great revelation, no great secret. There is only you. No, there were not. In times past and in times future, there are Jedi who will stop listening to the Force, those that will try to forget it but maintain unconscious ties, and those, as in the past, just as I, who have had the Force stripped from them. But no Jedi ever made the choice you did, to sever ties so completely, so utterly, that it leaves a wound in the Force. It was a mistake to try to make you feel it again, I see that now. There is no truth in the Force. But there is truth in you, Exile, and that is why I chose you. No, there were not, because you are a Jedi who turned from the Force and survived and became stronger for it. The Apprentice must kill the Master. If you do not, I will kill you. If I do not, then all you have achieved will be as nothing, as empty and as violent as Malachor itself. Then you will break. And then, my apprentice, you shall die. I have thought of this moment more than you know, and I wondered if here, at this ending between us, if you would care enough to try to save me, if a Jedi could find it within themselves to spare one who has fallen so far. I wanted you to say those words. For that I am grateful. I wanted you to say that you would save me. For that I am grateful. But I do not want your mercy. I want you to break. But I do not want your mercy. I want you to be complete as you were meant to be, to let the echo die and hear the sound of the Force again. I know, but there is more than death in this galaxy, and you shall not find it easy. It was difficult to draw you here, but it had to be done. This place is your last test. It is the graveyard of the past, where you lost everything. It is the dark place in your mind that still echoes a failure. Now we shall see if you can overcome the weight of Malachor and silence the echoes that beat from its heart. At last you have arrived. Your training is almost complete. If you do not kill me, I shall end you. Strike me down. End this. You will not show me mercy. I will see you break before you do. Good. You have strength. But you have yet to learn the full extent of power. Then finish this. Kill me. Strike me down. And at last, end this. I died long ago. And now the circle is complete. Strike me down. And at last, end this. It is done. At last, it is done. You are greater than any I have ever trained. By killing me here, you have rewarded me more than you can possibly know. Save me. You already have. It is enough what you have done. From now into the future. It is your choice. I had hoped you would follow Revan's path, but you and Revan are different and your path is your own. You may take one of the ships that orbit Malachor and depart this place, or you may remain here on Malachor and wait for the others, those touched by the Force, who will come in time. Or you may return to your exile, where your presence will no longer affect the actions of others. There is no dishonor in any of these choices. I only ask that you make the choice without regret. Very well. There is nothing holding you here, not any longer. Then you shall become a teacher, as I once was. I am proud. It is difficult to turn away from battle and adventure, and to instead guide others along their path. Then you need no longer be. You have defeated Malachor. This place no longer holds meaning. Many things do I see as I gaze here from the heart of Malachor. This place channels such energies. If it matters to you at this last moment, I shall look into the future and tell you of what I see. It is my last gift to you from one exile to another. You travel with them for so long, yet you do not know them still. Feel them through the force, feel what they feel, hear their thoughts and know them as I fought to know you. They were the lost Jedi, you know, the true Jedi upon which the future will be built. They simply needed a leader and a teacher. She will stop hunting life and instead live it. 
She was not born to be a predator, despite her true father and the life she led within the shadow of Narshada. She will miss you and think of you often. You who awakened her to what life is. She will live, but only for a time. Her death will occur in many years' time on a forgotten planet, saving the lives of others. But it will be her choice, and she will have no regrets. Many battles does that one have left in him, as Revan intended. A general needs an army as he needs those he trusts, and Candorus is a loyal beast, no matter how much he is broken upon Revan's will. But you know this. They will die a death that will last millennia, until all that remains is their code, their history, and in the end the shell of their armor upon the shell of a man too easily slain by Jedi. The blinded one shall return to her home world, and as she looked upon you she shall look upon the surface of that world and perhaps at last see what she was meant to see. After that I do not know. I do know that you must leave her behind. Where you are destined you must not take anyone you love. It was Revan's choice as well. She cannot help but love you. It is a curious influence you have over her. If she leaves this place, she will leave battle behind her. She will take Atris's role as historian, and she will teach others of the Jedi who was not a Jedi, and who trained her to feel the Force. After that I do not know. I do know that you must leave her behind. Where you are destined, you must not take anyone you love. It was Revan's choice as well. He cannot help but love you in his way. It is a pure, ideal love he holds, yet somehow it never dulls in your presence or through your actions. If he leaves this place, he will leave the galaxy behind him. He will sit upon the new council, reluctantly as all good men do, and he will not forget the Jedi who had lost the Force, yet showed him the way to reclaim it. After that I do not know. I do know that you must leave him behind, the same choice that Revan made. Where you are destined, you must not take any one you love. And of the ones who travelled with you, that is all I see. Aten is, as always, the fool. And the Force watches out for one such as him, I feel, as it does for the old such as I. He is a fool, and that should answer all your questions. He has nothing to offer one such as you, and even a fool such as Aten is not so ignorant of that fact. I do not believe one would die lightly for one one did not care about. I would have killed the galaxy to preserve you. I would have let the galaxy die. You are more rare than you know, and what you have taught yourself must not be allowed to die. You are not Sith, not truly, and it is for that that I love you. Their paths are unknown to me, even the small one who waits for you outside this place. I sense it has one last journey for you. You must go where Revan did, into the unknown regions, where the Sith, the true Sith, wait in the dark for the great war that comes. It is because he remembered what lay buried here, this place, its teachings. It paved the way to Korriban, you know, the remnants here. And because Malachor, like Korriban, is on the fringes of the ancient Sith Empire, where the Sith wait for us in the dark. Have we? You thought that the corrupted remnants of the Republic, the machine spawned by technology that Revan led into battle, were the Sith? You are wrong. The Sith is a belief, and its empire, the true Sith Empire, rules elsewhere. And Revan knew that the true war is not against the Republic. It waits for us beyond the Outer Rim, and he has gone to fight it in his own way. And he left the Ebon Hawk and all its machines behind, for he knew he would not need them. And like you, he knew he must leave all loves behind as well, no matter how deeply one cares for them. Because such attachments are not the way of the Jedi and they would only bring doom to them both in the dark places where he now walks. It would have helped had he made her understand, but she was always strong-willed, that one, and did not understand war as Revan did. Because I did not know where he had gone, if he had asked, would I have gone? 
I do not know. But he will need warriors, Sith and Jedi, any who can be sent after him into the depths of space, for any who know the way. Perhaps you shall go there with him and do battle at the end of all things, but the way lies past me, and if you wish to go, then you need to stop me. Instead, I remained here, and now show others the way, because such attachments would only bring doom to them both in the dark places where she now walks. It would have helped had she made him understand, but a hero of the Republic, no matter how brave, cannot understand war as Revan did. It is because she remembered what lay buried here, this place, its teachings. It paved the way to Korriban, you know, the remnants here. You are not a Jedi, not truly, and it is for that that I love you. There is no love left in a heart such as that one. But he would die for you, yes. Atten shall keep his murderer's heart. Many deaths shall he cause in the dark corners of the galaxy, always hunting, always finding prey. He shall grow hungry in a galaxy where there are few Jedi, and it will eventually consume him. But I shall say no more. If he leaves this place, he will leave all that is Jedi behind him at last. A heart can only handle so many betrayals before turning away entirely. He will become a senator on one of the mid-rim worlds and devote himself to the people there. He will be a wise, steady ruler, and he will not call upon the Force again. But his rule will grow to be a cold one, and he will find that the Code of the Galaxy pales in comparison to the failures of the Code of the Jedi. She will seek to forget you and this place, and instead give herself fully to battle. She will be the last of the Handmaidens no longer. Where once she dreamed of the Jedi, she will put such things behind her. The Jedi will always be ones that she will judge, and if she can, punish for being human. The blinded one shall return to her home world, and she shall look upon the surface of that world, and perhaps at last see what she was meant to see. Her life has been changed by your meeting in ways that may not be felt for decades to come. Salvation is a relative thing, but as you understand it, yes, the blinded one's heart has now been put to rest. Now that vengeance no longer clouds her sight, she shall be stronger for it. She will leave her memories of Qatar in the wreckage of the past, and instead turn her eyes to the future that you have put before her. She will continue to hunt life, but it shall have a new edge to it. She shall become a predator. Her life shall be a long one, filled with battles and conflict. But in the end, bounty hunters will come for her, as she came for them. She will die on Ord Mantell, her death a badge of honor for her killers, before they, too, meet their end. The Republic will fall, as it always has, a fall that will take millennia. The skies of Telos shall be shrouded in ash for a century. All that the Republic wrought there, serving only as ruins to be uncovered by historians. These worlds, like Malakor and Korriban, will become home to darkness, creating new evils that will rise to threaten the galaxy. Dantooine shall survive. The community you saved shall be the foundation upon which Dantooine shall be habitable again. They shall drive back the raiders, the Mandalorians, and all that strike at the outer rim. The Republic shall again establish their presence there, and shield it with its forces, and Dantooine shall heal, be safe, and its skies free. The ruins of the Academy shall remain. Nar Shaddaa shall persist as it always has, but its evil and corruption shall grow. The exchange shall rise in power, but only in the end to be consumed by the hunger of the true lords of Nar Shaddaa, who dwell upon the planet below. The huts will not long tolerate the exchange, and without Goto among them, they shall feed upon themselves until there is nothing left. Vaklu shall have a short reign, but Onderon's independence shall persist. As he fought the Mandalorians, his triumph over the Republic shall serve to preserve Onderon against the rest of the galaxy, and Onderon shall maintain its customs, its law, its history, its identity. And most of all, its victory shall give Onderon strength, so that the horrors of the Sith War and the Mandalorian Wars will not soon come to its surface again.
Korriban shall be as it always was, a graveyard for the darkest of the Sith lords still whispering within their tombs. It shall always be a source of evil, spawning threats throughout the millennia. It, like Malachor, brushes the edges of the empire that waits in the dark, and like Malachor, the Sith have forgotten it. For a time, they will remember. Revan knew this. Queen Talia shall have a long reign. Much good will come of it. She will, as she has, rule wisely and well. Onderon shall remain in the Republic, and the world shall prosper, though its people shall, over time, lose their customs in the ocean of the Republic and become the people of Onderon no longer. Nar Shaddaa shall persist as it always has, but there will be a heart to the world where there was nothing before, where once the lost and disposed were trapped there. Now they will struggle and grow. From despair shall come hope. Dantooine shall lie in ruins as was intended when Malak's fleet brought death to the planet. Its surface will become home to nomads and primitives, who will walk upon the ruins of the Jedi Enclave and not know upon the histories they tread. Under the care of the herds of Ithor, the surface of Telos will bloom again, and its golden fields shall again harbor scientists and thinkers. And complacent and peaceful, it shall forget the time that Saul Karath orbited it and brought fire to its skies. But it shall be a home world again to others who will stretch out across the galaxy and bring life. Telos shall recover and Zerka shall make it a place for machines and sciences. It will run smooth and cold, like a machine. But it shall not forget the time that Saul Karath orbited it and brought fire to it. It shall learn to defend itself against war, and it shall never again be caught defenseless. Ah, yes, there is truth in what you say. No, no. Many choices were there. But... You made the right ones. You are now ready for war once again. The unknown regions call to us as they called to Revan. It is time to abandon the Republic, to die. Are you ready? They have done what was necessary, and they will live their lives better for having known you. <laughs>